When it comes time for Santa to visit the Hawaiian Islands, he gives Rudolph and his friends a richly deserved break. Yes, Christmas on Waikiki Beach looks a little different than it does back on the mainland. Merry Christmas! Ho ho, Merry Christmas! But for the men and women of the United States Navy stationed here, this Christmas is a very special one. Their football team has come to Hawaii for its first bowl game in 15 years. Go Navy, beat Cal! ABC Sports welcomes you to the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl in Honolulu. The midshipmen of the Naval Academy against the California Golden Bears of the Pac-10. On a beautiful day at Aloha Stadium outside of downtown Honolulu. Merry Christmas and welcome everybody with Todd Blackledge, I'm Brad Musburger. Well, if the folks like a high-scoring game, Mr. Blackledge, we may have that for them here. Well, it certainly is going to be exciting. Both offenses know how to move the football, average over 400 yards, both average over 30 points a game, but they get it done in radically different ways. With Navy, you'll see them run the ball. One of the few teams that still runs the true triple option, Cal likes to get it done throwing the football. Steve Mariucci, their coach, brought the West Coast, Coast offense with him from Green Bay, where he was the quarterback coach. And what a quarterback contrast we've got here. Pat Barnes, the record breaker from Berkeley. Well, I'll tell you what, he's got an amazing touchdown to interception ratio this year. 31 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. He only had one year in this system, learning the system under Mariucci, but he prospered well under it, very efficient with the football. And when we look to the other side, it is the feet of Chris McCoy. Now, Chris McCoy is a runner. He's only the fifth player and the first quarterback ever at Navy to run for over 1,000 yards. He certainly comes to run first and throw second this offense. Both quarterbacks are counted on to be good decision makers for their offenses to go. Well, the third member of our broadcast team, Dean Blevins, is down below. Merry Christmas, Dean. Thank you, Brad, and Merry Christmas to you and all of our viewers. And Merry Christmas to Charlie Weatherby, the coach at Navy. A memorable season capped off by perhaps a memorable game. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. These seniors uh, have done an excellent job this year. We've got some great captains in Clint Bruce and Ben Fay and a great senior class, and this team is a special football team. Briefly, you've told your guys as we've been waiting here a little bit extra long to focus and refocus. What does that mean? Well, all season long, there's been times when they had to refocus on the task at hand. There's going to be distractions during a football game. you got to focus and stay focused, leave blinders on, and then refocus. Right. And that's what we talked to them about. Good luck. Time. Let's Thank let you, them Dean. go. What do you say? Let's go! What a promising future, Dean, for Steve Mariucci. Well, Steve Mariucci, I think your club is ready to go. We're ready to go. We've been waiting for it. We've been looking forward to this for a long time, and now it's time to do it. You've got a different attire. We're used to seeing you in the Navy blazer. What's the deal? The Aloha shirt. This is the Aloha ball, right? Got to wear an Aloha shirt. All right, good luck, Steve. Thank you very much. All right, Brent, they're ready to go, and so are we. we need is the football and look who has found his way to Aloha Stadium Merry Christmas everybody the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl is about to start maybe you think only those fast lane types need a Nokia cellular phone Bill, Bob, I'm running late. Well, now Nokia is making cellular phones so easy. So, uh, cover for me during finger paints? They're practically child's play. Right, it's science day. With Nokia's big screens, easy to find names and numbers, and sleek designs. Cooch, could you handle sandbox for me? I'm like in a four-lane parking lot. We're talking rest period before I get there. Nokia, connecting people. Someone could win a million dollars at the Nokia Sugar Bowl on January 2nd. Be sure to watch. It's 
ball and how you use it. ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl brought to you by Jeep. Makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee and Wrangler. American Express helps small business do more. U.S. Navy, Navy, let the journey begin. And Sheraton Hotels in Waikiki in celebration of Aloha. Gerald Whalen of the Chrysler Corporation. Is out to toss the coin here prior to the start of this Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl between the Naval Academy dressed in white on the right hand side and California over on the left and California will go on offense with the first possession of the game. The weather here could become a factor a little bit later in the day. 79% humidity, and we will see how these two teams hold up, Todd, in the fourth quarter. Well, both these teams really take a lot of pride in their ability to finish games strongly and be well-conditioned football teams, but the bottom line is they have not played a game for a couple weeks, so it's, it's a much different situation in, in conditioning and practice than actually going out and playing a game in these conditions. Big Ten officiating crew. David Whitbeth is the referee, and the umpire is Percy Munn. And Henry Armstead, the side judge, there's from Canton, Ohio also. Maybe one of the only other guys from my hometown that's here in Hawaii for Christmas. You'll have someone to chat with on the <laughs> way back home. Tim Shubsda. Suburb of Dallas, Texas, out to kick it off for the Naval Academy as we get underway, and we will see if California takes much time before they put the ball in the air. And here are the deep return men, Delta O'Neill and Kato Sarwango. Back deep now for California, and here is Schubster. Tom Vanderhorst due to kick the field goals, but if Navy wants a long one, they will call on Schubster. They set up, and you'll see them come over now. Ryan Longwell is the kicker. Zeev Gottlieb, backup quarterback, will be the holder. Bad snap. Live ball. And it's down there. So it's 6-0. The kickoff is returned for a touchdown. But a bad snap by California. Matt Loggins skying it just a little bit high. Cal was able to save one of those earlier in the year, Todd, but this one just a bit too high. Delta O'Neill is a guy that they know is going to be an impact player. He's a young freshman back. He's had some fumble problems here late in the season. But special teams is an area you can work on during this off time in preparation for a bowl, but you don't go live very often. 
And you can see just a good forward wall set up by Cal, good blocks at the point of attack, and then when O'Neal gets past the 25-yard line, just uses that elusive running style and his speed to outrun the defense. And again, for Navy, they were in position to cover kicks, but you don't practice live kickoff coverage when you're getting ready for a bowl game. A very unfortunate way to start the game for Navy. Again, special teams, an area that maybe your skills can erode a little bit during a downtime and off time in preparation for uh, a bowl game. We saw the mistake by Navy's kickoff coverage. Here's a mistake by the Cal extra point team. Bad snap on the point after. And we see that number 34, Pat McGrew, goes back deep for the Naval Academy. He's one of their starting running backs. Now watch this interesting kicking formation as Longwell comes up to measure it. Frequently during the game, they will not deploy the other 10 players in that way. He will just come out of that huddle and kick it immediately and try to catch them off balance. So now it is Navy's turn. Fielded at the three yard line. Brings it out to the 23-yard line, where it will be first down for Chris McCoy, the junior from Morris, Georgia, who will quarterback the middies. You can see the first quarterback to ever rush for 1,000 yards at the Naval Academy and 16 rushing TDs. Broke Heisman record holders, Joe Bellino's record. Omar Nelson. Jeep Eagle backs and receivers. He is expected to be very active. This formation deployed by Navy spreads out the defense a little bit. They're going to throw it on first down. Shem is in the game as a starter. And they hit nine yards on first down. Well, Todd, we speculated that they might want to open up with the passing game behind this offensive line. What about Navy's offensive line? Well, they're not a real big offensive line, not a powerful group, but they're very efficient. They work very well within their scheme. Brian Drexler, their center, one of their leaders, the right tackle, Scott Zimmerman, probably their best offensive lineman was an all-east selection this season. Second down and one, and again, Nelson comes up behind McCoy. They flip it to Omar. Goes for the first down, plus now it's Nelson. Midfield, and the offensive fireworks is underway in Honolulu. One thing Cal's going to have to really be aware of with this offense is the receivers for Navy are more inclined to be better blockers than they are actually receivers. And these defensive backs are going to have to be able to get off blocks all afternoon. Watch the option coming right down the line. McCoy is forced to pitch the ball by Rhodes. Does a nice job getting it out there. Now watch the blocking downfield. McGrew, 34, is going to get a block. And out on the outside, he'll also pick up a block by the wide receiver. And that is the thing that Navy does. They block well downfield. And you have to do that to run the option effectively. 18-yard game. Nelson for a couple of yards behind the right guard against this Cal defense. And we should tell you that there are a couple of stories. First of all, California is without its best defensive lineman today. Brandon Whiting is out with a knee injury. He's a junior from Long Beach, California. Easily is going to be used in that place along with Evan Collins. But also, they are without Brent Jones, a backup nose tackle. And Sawanga has to go into corner because Kevin Devine, along with Jones, those two were injured in an automobile accident on the way to the team bus that was taking them to the airport where they would travel over here to Honolulu. So they are short-handed uh, here, Todd, defensively. And, and the, the loss of Brandon Whiting will really hurt him. He was their best defensive player, and in stopping the option, you have to first stop the fullback. He would have been a very important factor for that Cal defense. Second down and eight. Cal's off sides right now. All right defensive lineman, and it was called. It was called just as you said that. Clearly, he had lined up offside. Well, Navy will throw you off with their alignment because their center is much further ahead of the rest of the offensive linemen. If you've got to be careful to line up where the football is and not line up where you think the ball is. Take a look at this. Now, here's the rest of the, the Navy offensive line. But look, the ball's right here. And you can see clearly across the line of scrimmage, 
is number 97 easily, and you've got to pay attention to where the ball is and not where the man lined up in front of you is. Navy likes to back those offensive linemen off the ball to increase their ability to get angles on blocking. When you don't have overpowering linemen, you like, to, you like to work angles to your advantage. They back them off the line of scrimmage, give them a little more room to work. Todd, this will give them a second and three, and that's much different for an option attack to be in second and three rather than second and eight. Will Smith, a good blocker, number one, checks in. He's over on the left wing as Corey Shem, a receiver, started. Nelson to the 34-yard line. Boy, he's a sturdy-looking fella, isn't he? Low to the ground, you can't miss tackles on this guy. Cal was in good position to make a play on that particular play, and just a bad tackle right about five yards into the play. And again, to stop the option, you first have to stop the fullback. Omar Nelson has had a very nice year running that position for the Navy offense. Now Howard Bryant, now he is a passer. He is in on the left wing. And McCoy looked in his direction, then kept it, then stepped ahead for three yards, and this will give Navy second and seven. Coaches talk about Chris McCoy, one of his greatest strengths. He's not necessarily the fastest guy or the, or the best throwing quarterback that they could have, but he very seldom gets rattled. He has great composure. He doesn't get flustered when things go against him, and, and that is uh, really a sign of great leadership. And to run this offense, you have to be able to be patient and consistent and stay with the things that you're doing. Chris McCoy has had a wonderful season for Charlie Weatherby. The Navy's first possession. They have moved to Cal's 32-yard line on second down. McCoy option keeps it. Cuts back. He is inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. That's where his forward progress will be marked. But they need to reach the 25-yard line for a first down. Inside linebacker Nate Gelderman making the stop. Todd, in talking to the coaches, young, inexperienced, that's the way the defensive coaches at Cal really assess that unit. Yeah, they are young. In fact, they've had to rely on two freshman linebackers, Matt Beck and Nate Gelderman, to really provide the leadership. And now you take Brandon Whiting out of the mix also, who was their best player. Uh, this is a team really looking for itself in a ball game like today. Now McCoy calls timeout. You can see as he came up to the line of scrimmage, looked over at the defense and called a timeout. Third and three coming up when you return to the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Like this mini fridge, my foot massager. Heck, I even had a big screen put in for my friends. If you're looking for a real challenge, this is it. If you're looking for a sure thing, take the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. This deodorant evaporates less quickly, it also lasts longer, protects better. So try high endurance. It's a sure thing. And now you got proof. I know I do. Trusting the wrong diarrhea medicine uh -oh. can put you in a very uncomfortable position. But you can count on Imodium AD to stop diarrhea, often in one dose. You could end up taking dose after dose after dose of the pink stuff to stop diarrhea as effectively as Imodium AD. Mm. Don't take chances with diarrhea. You should have taken Imodium AD. Take Imodium AD. Sorry. One dose relief you can count on. This is the big one. Number one, Florida State tackles arch rival Florida with college football's national title on the line. The Nokia Sugar Bowl, January 2nd on ABC. Welcome back to the Cheap Eagle Aloha Bowl. Todd, that is Navy strength. What do you think? Will they use it here on third and three? Well, the thing about an option football team, you look at the most prolific year they've had in a long time. The thing about an option team is, is any down is a good down for the option. I would expect to keep the ball in Chris McCoy's hand here on third down. Keep 
keeps it, but he is short of the first down. So the first gamble could be coming up here for Coach Weatherby. It is fourth and two as Gelderman and Jacobs make the stop for the Bears. And we see immediately that a kicking unit is coming on the field here for Navy. Tom Vanderhorst out of Newman, Georgia, number 78, will attempt what would be a 44-yard field goal and cut Cal's lead in half. Now the holder is David Lark. They are strong over to the right side. Pulled it to the left. No good. So California returns the opening kickoff for a 100-yard touchdown. They miss the conversion. Navy's first drive stalls. A missed field goal, and we're sitting on 6-0. Well, Vanderhorst has been pretty accurate this year. I'm a little surprised he was in. We thought Schubsta might try the longer field goal. He's got good leg on it. Just pulled it to the left, just barely missing over that left upright. So California has the lead, but now we get the first look at Pat Barnes and the Bears' offense. Delta O'Neill, who scored on that kickoff return, is the starting running back. They open with three wide receivers. The aerial circus underway, and O'Neill handles the ball on first down. And you know that ball was coming loose again at the 34-yard line as he was hit by Grishon. So Barnes, a senior out of Mission Viejo, California, and he has enjoyed one of the better seasons in the Pac-10. Certainly you could not overlook the performance of Jake Plummer down at Arizona State. But take a look at those numbers. Impressive. 31 and 8. Touchdown interception. Fake over the middle. It was wide open. But he overthrew Niall Benjamin. So the Jeep Eagle. Backs and receivers here at the Aloha Bowl. You took a look at Benjamin. Probably Barnes' favorite target is Bobby Shaw, number three. O'Neill has already scored the touchdown. Tony Gonzalez, one of the better tight ends in college football, also a member of the Bears basketball team as the Bears come up without a huddle here. Yeah, this is a good move by Steve Mariucci because Navy on defense likes to move around and give you a lot of different looks. By going with the no huddle, it forces them to show their hand a little more early into the play. On third and short, no question. Time is there. This time, Benjamin has it. It's accurately thrown. A first down for Cal at midfield. And there's a penalty flag, however. It has been thrown back by the 32-yard line. Well, Todd, as the penalty is measured off, what about the offensive line of Cal's? Cal's got a big physical offensive line. Tariq Glenn, the left tackle, is a real pro prospect. He's got good feet. He spent his first two years playing defense and then moved over to the offensive line. He's a big guy, the biggest guy ever to play for Cal. We have a personal foul, face mask on the offense, 15-yard penalty, previous spot, repeat, third down. And Clint Bruce is the leading tackler for the Middies, number 51. This is last football game. Alota. Number six, he's the leader in the defensive backfield. You can see they will deploy five defensive backs. Alota passes the calls on for the coaching staff. The Navy's normal alignment on defense is, is a nickel defense with five defensive backs. And scheme-wise, they feel they match up well against Cal. The question is, can they match up with them personnel-wise? This is third and 17. Barnes to throw for it. Has time. Fires Benjamin. First down. 42-yard line. They bail themselves out of a third and 17 hole. This, this is going to be too easy for Pat Barnes. Now, if Navy can't get any more pressure on him, then he's going to do this all day. This is the best quarterback that Navy has faced all season, and they're going to have to find a way to get more pressure on him because he's just too good. He's too good of a thrower. O'Neill cut back left hole, and he is slammed at the 47-yard line by Adam Creshawn out of Northridge, California. Navy trying to substitute on the run here. Again, the, the no-huddle offense is a little bit of a surprise by Cal, and so far it's worked very effectively for him. It's kept that Navy defense back on their heels a little bit. O'Neill on second down is hit behind the line, and the helmet 
helmet goes rolling. Hey, Clint Bruce, number 51, the senior from Garland, Texas. And he made a 51 type hit, didn't he? Excellent play by Bruce. He's not the biggest or fastest linebacker, but the coaches say he's very instinctive, and that's what you want in a linebacker. I mean, I think of a guy like Chris Spielman like that, very instinctive, not the best skills as a runner or, or in terms of size or strength, but great instincts, and that's exactly what Clint Bruce brings to the table as a linebacker for Dave. Third and seven. Brandon Willis, the running back. Three wide receivers. Benjamin's the motion receiver. That puts him in a slot to the right. Barnes looked for the screen, wasn't there, going down. Sacked at the 30-yard line, and Michael Ogden, along with Clint Bruce, make the defensive play for the middies. Those are the guys that got the sack, Brent, but Chad Hosapel also made a great play because he's the guy who read the screen of Brandon Willis. They're going to try to run the screen. You can see Bruce coming on the blitz. They made a decision to come after Pat Barnes with more pressure, but the screen was covered up, and Barnes had nowhere to go with the football. Good defense, good team defense by Navy. Here's the always busy Ryan Longwell. Munson kicks placements, field goals, does it all. Standing back there for the Bears, one of the few young men you'll ever see who made first and second all-team all-conference. This is what his specialty is, hunting. And he booms one into the bright sky of Honolulu. Scott's got it to the 15-yard line for Navy, and there's an alley. To the 31-yard line. It's the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl in Honolulu. Enjoying his Christmas, and we hope you are too. He'll be right back. FedEx uses over 500 airplanes to handle your two-day package. Cost, about $8. UPS uses over 500 airplanes to handle your two-day package. Cost, about $6. The U.S. Postal Service uses over 15,000 airplanes to handle your priority mail two- to three-day package. Cost, three dollars. So, eight, six, three, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. The golden age of small business has arrived, and with it, the gold corporate Optima card, new from American Express. It allows you to extend payments to manage your cash flow with a low introductory APR of 8.9% and a credit line of up to $20,000, all with no annual fee. It's the perfect match for today's small businesses. The Gold Corporate Optima Card, for the golden road to your success. You're born, you go to school, and then one day, things begin to get interesting. Now, instead of preparing, you're doing. The stakes are a lot higher than they were in high school. Because out here, the tests you're given are of your honor, your courage, and your commitment. This is your journey. It's time you got underway. Call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Let the journey begin. Tiger Woods, almost before he could walk, he could swing. Now he's Sports Illustrated Man of the Year. In his own words, he talks about his vision and his goals. Primetime, ABC Tonight. Hi, I'm Charlie Weatherby, and this is my family. On behalf of the United States Naval Academy football family, we'd like to wish you all a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Well, Charlie Weatherby in two years has done an outstanding job of coaching at Navy. So good that two schools don't make that three. I called and asked if he might be available. Boston College, Pittsburgh, Baylor, there were inquiries from all three. First and ten now for the middies, and McCoy on first down, pulls out, goes one-on-one, -on -one, deflected. And the minis are in business. On a deflected pass, they go to the 12-yard line. And it was Corey Shim slipping out of the backfield, the senior specialist as a receiver, who makes the big play here for Navy. It's a 57-yard game. Corey Shem was in on the first series and they threw the ball. Now he's in their first play of the second series. They throw again, and there shouldn't be any question about the strength of Chris McCoy's arm. He can throw it. You just don't always know where it's going. But a nice job of Corey Shem maintaining his concentration when the ball was batted up in the air, staying with it, making the catch off the deflection. That's good work by Corey Shem downfield. De Stefano deflected the ball to Shem. First down, McCoy now. 
Scott weaves his way to the seven-yard line. Middies trail it by six, but they're threatening. That's a huge play for Chris McCoy and Navy. The, the one thing about this Navy team is they're not a good catch-up football team. When you run the option, you want to eat up clock, you want to keep the game close. They gave up the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Now they're back inside the 20s. You take a look at their numbers through the season. 83% of the time, they get points on the board. Tim Canada is the fullback behind McCoy as Navy continues to rotate its running backs. There's an audible by McCoy. The end zone, we're tied. Quarter, 6-21 remaining, and Navy leads California 7-6. Chris McCoy obviously saw something he liked on the left side of the formation. He audible to the get to the fullback off the left. Both inside linebackers a little bit late getting to the play. And again, another missed tackle, that time by Nate Gelderman on the fullback. You've got to tackle the fullback first to stop the option. Here we go again. Now watch. The fullback's responsibility is the linebacker, Gelderman. He's a little slow getting to the point of attack. And then a missed tackle and hard running by Tim Canada. Good audible by Chris McCoy. Good execution by the Navy offense. We thank you once again for your participation in the GP. That's a, that's a very important touchdown for the Navy offense. Again, I can't stress enough, they need to keep a game close because their offense is built around ball possession and staying close in the game. We would not be surprised if they didn't kick it away from that fellow over there on the left-hand side. He's already been 100 yards for the opening touchdown of the game. So let's see what Schubster does here with this kickoff. Deeper and let's climb again, they say. So here he is. 10, 15. But this time the alley is closed. They forced him back away from the sideline. And California will start 80 yards away. We it talked about Pat Barnes and his incredible season, his one season under this offense with Steve Mariucci, 31 touchdowns, eight interceptions. He threw the same number of touchdowns in one game against Arizona than he threw interceptions the entire year. That was eight. He has really flourished under this system. And he just really regrets that he doesn't have one more year that he can play in this West Coast offense. Toddy has Shaw out to the short side of the field. Over to the right. Looked at his direction. Came back and slipped it over there on the other side to Benjamin. And Benjamin bangs to the 24-yard line. Well, let's go down below and uh, check in with our colleague, Dean. You look very nice today, Dean. Hey, thank you, Brent. I appreciate it. New belt and all. It's good to be here. Clint Bruce, a terrific story. Number 51, the linebacker for Navy. He told us the other night, he says, you know, I'm slow, I'm fat, but, man, I just love to play football. Go back to this, and we'll finish the story in a moment. Absolutely. And a couple of big hits as O'Neill is pushed out of bounds, but he did pick up the first down, Dean. Look at a, let's look at a photo of him, Brent. Take a look at this. Now, he has a front tooth that was knocked out in a car accident a few years ago, and he had, a, had to be wired shut. His mouth was. He was on a liquid diet, had to drink his meals, and he said, I carried a blender around with me and blended my chicken fried steak. Unbelievable guy, unbelievable player, and I know, Todd, you had a chance to meet him, a neat guy. He is, and he plays hard, and, you know, you couldn't see his eyes on that one because they were shut, but he's got that glassed-over look that all great linebackers have, too. Short drop, Barnes, throws high, tight end is in the game. Now, here's quite a fella, Tony Gonzalez out of Huntington, California. He is only a junior, 
one of the better tight ends in college football. He has played five games of basketball already for the Bears, and we watch him here. He's got great skills. Now, you're not going to see it here, his ability to get downfield, but just a little quick hitter. You see the hands, and again, excellent athlete. Second and nine, they fire to him. This time, you see his ability in open field. They can't give him that much space. First down at the 46. Navy has very good corners in Robert Green and Sean Andrews. They feel they can match up with the wide receivers, but where they're going to have some problems today is on this guy, Tony Gonzalez. He's an outstanding athlete. He has the speed to get down the middle of the defense, and that can be a real weakness for this Navy football team. Todd Barnes is spreading it around. Douglas was slotted to the left. Wants to go deep. Here's his slot man. Douglas will battle for it, and he's got it. First and goal at the nine-yard line. Brent, I am a firm believer in a, in a quarterback taking chances and throwing the ball up and letting receivers have a chance to make a play for you because normally a receiver is better able to adjust to the football, stop and go up and make a catch than a defensive back is. You don't have to wait for the guy to be wide open. Now, he is not wide open on this play. Barnes gives him a chance to make the play. You can see Douglas adjust to the football, did a much better job adjusting to the ball than Aloda did on the coverage. Malili, the lead fullback, and O'Neal is hit behind the line by number 51, and Clint Bruce is off to a huge game, the toothless one for the Naval Academy. Well, this won't be his last game, and it won't be his last game in Hawaii because he'll be returning here to play in the Hula Bowl in a couple weeks, and he's very much looking forward to that. But this is a guy that when he hangs up that helmet and spikes, it's going to be a very sad day for Clint Bruce. He's going to get the very most out of his last two appearances he can. 73% for the Bears inside the 20. Now they face a second down and goal from the 12. Barnes is getting all kinds of time. Then it closed. The door was shut, but there's interference, I believe, in the end zone. Shaw was trying to get free down there. He was in a battle with Robert Green in the end zone, and he could not dislodge. Yeah, that's a big break for Cal because it, it looked like Navy had good coverage, but the holding, the defensive holding on Robert Green, as you mentioned, gives Cal another shot at the end zone. Yeah, the automatic first down here is the killer, isn't it, Todd? It's a tough part of the field, a tough part of the, you know, the field to defend. You, you don't have to defend depth because you've got the back of the end zone to help you. But still, a lot of crossing routes by this West Coast offense when they get into the red zone. On the defense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, second down. Here's Bobby Shaw, now the leading receiver in the Pac-10. You can see him trying to get inside, and right there, the left hand of Robert Green up on the shoulder pad. Good call by the officials. That's, that's a tough route down in the red zone to defend. You get faked to the outside, and he's trying to come on the quick slant. That time, Green was beat. And, Todd, that is one of the changes with the NFL. I should correct myself on that. It's not an automatic first down. They're going to get half the distance here, so they're going to repeat their second down here in the college game from the six-yard line. That's where they are right now. Second down and goal for Barnes and the Bears from the six. Barnes rolling right on the roll, throws touchdown Shaw, and California regains the lead. We mentioned out the top how good both of these quarterbacks were and how they're the catalyst for both of these teams. We saw Chris McCoy audible for the touchdown on Navy's possession. That time Pat Barnes saw something he liked, audible at the line of scrimmage, got the touchdown throw easily to Shaw. California leads it for the second time today as Barnes throws his first touchdown pass of the day to his favorite target, Shaw. It's 13-7 at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Run, run, Rudolph. Dixon can be Music like you've never heard it before. Infinity Sound Systems, an instrumental part of driving. Once a single library held the knowledge of the world. Centuries later, data was still controlled by an elite few. 
Then Oracle freed everyone to work with databases. Today, Oracle is putting the knowledge of the world online. It will forever change our markets and our culture. Where do you learn about companies whose future is as limitless as our hunger to know? Exactly. Nasdaq.com With all the locations their off-highway capabilities could take them, you'd think there'd be little chance of ever seeing a Jeep vehicle in the same place more than once. Not true. Introducing the all-new award-winning Jeep Wrangler, the latest 4x4 of the year, from the brand that's won this major award more than anyone else. See the 4x4 of the year at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. Charlie Weatherby was complaining to the officials during that timeout about something involving Pat Barnes. What was it, Todd? Yeah, I think he was a little bit complaining about Barnes maybe hunching on the, when he was given the snap count, moving his head, trying to draw Navy off sides. And, uh, but they had a lot of trouble stopping Pat Barnes in that particular scoring drive. Good execution by Pat Barnes. Good use of the audible system when he got down into the red zone. Longwell ready to kick it off. George Hill, the stats man, tells us on this Christmas that that 45-yard pass to Douglas was Cal's longest pass play of the season. Hard to believe in a passing attack like that that they wouldn't have had passes over 50 yards for scores. Kickoff is fielded at the five-yard line by Enrico Hunter. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Ganged up on at the 25-yard line, short of the 25, and that's where Navy will put it in play. Now, what Barnes saw in this touchdown is he's going to see a bunch of people in around the ball, so he audibles to a little sprint out, gets out away from the pressure, and he's got man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. That's an easy throw and catch between Barnes and Shaw. Good use of the audible. He saw Navy coming in into a blitz situation, called for the little half rollout to get away from the pressure, and then made the nice throw for the score. Well, it looks like the first team that can find a defense against the other especially maybe in business here first and ten now for the running attack and of course McCoy's arm set up its touchdown a little bit earlier spreading the field with this running attack Nelson is hit right at the line of scrimmage that is a strong defensive play for the Cal Bears that time and Jerry Deloach he is one of the fellows who's going to be filling in for Whiting today he was able to come in and uh, make the stop it's troublesome when you don't have your best defensive lineman against an option team. It really is because the key to playing the option is being disciplined. You have to play assignment football. You've got to have somebody assigned to the fullback, somebody assigned to the quarterback, somebody assigned to the pitch man all the time, every play, because Navy will run the option from a variety of different formations, and the minute you get out of sync discipline-wise, that's when you give up a big play. Pat McGrew and his running back. McCurry looks for Jerome Heaven downfield. Throws back wide open is Neil Plasconis on the other side. And Neil is inside the 35-yard line. The senior from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, comes up with the second big pass play for Chris McCoy today. Chris McCoy shows me something here because this is a hard, hard throw. I mean, he's rolling to his left and has to stop under heat and turn and throw back. Now watch as he shows like it's going to be a quarterback sprint out. I thought he was going to run the football, but it's a designed throwback. He pulls up. He knows he's going to get hit in the mouth. And on the move, makes a perfect throw back across the field to Plasconis. That is an outstanding play, an outstanding throw by Chris McCoy. Next thing you know, Ben Faye will be running the option for Navy. <laughs> He's supposed to be the passer. Oh, there's a beautiful quarterback draw. McCoy with a quick feet. Bangs to the 24-yard line. First down, Navy. <laughs> This is a well-oiled machine, this Navy offense. It's fun to watch a team like this play because they play so well as a team. They don't have superstars. Cal on defense, four or five freshmen in there starting, a team that finished the year 105 out of 111 Division I teams playing defense, and Navy getting after them a little bit right now. Offensive line coach was telling the Bears, get ready, folks. We need 60 points to hold these guys <laughs> off. First down again for the Naval Academy. It's 13-7. California with the lead, but Navy marching again. Nilsson on the option, and the Admiral is to the 19.
Dean, how's the temperature down there on the artificial turf? Well, with the turf factored in, Brent, I would say it's about 95. That factor really is advantageous to Navy, especially if they can control the ball because of Cal's defense. Both coaches told me before the game they felt that was true as well. Charlie Weatherby told us the key for them was 40 minutes of possession time and 40 points. That's what they were going to need to win the game. The fullback straight ahead, short of the first down on that play. So this will be third and short coming up for the middies. They need to reach the 14-yard line for a first down. And we have an injured midshipman down on the field. That's their center. That would be a huge loss. That is Drexler, number 55, who is down. Well, wild card Saturday coming your way on ABC. How about the Jacksonville Jaguars? In their second year, they make it to the playoffs, but they're going to a tough spot. They're going into Buffalo to play the Bills. That's the first one, live at noon Eastern time here on ABC. The second one, the Minnesota Vikings. And the screen doesn't know when to say it's over. They'll go down and play the Dallas Cowboys, who have overcome all kinds of difficulty this year. But still, they win a division, and they will host the first-round playoff game. And that center spot could be very troublesome here now for Navy. And this is a smart thing that Charlie Weatherby is doing, having Chris McCoy coming over and taking some snaps on the sideline from the new center. That's Lester Fortney who's coming in. You don't want, when you've got some momentum, you don't want to take a chance of mishandling a snap. So a good move, having McCoy come over to the sideline during the injury timeout and get some work with the new center. It is third and three. McCoy in the Naval Academy. Trailing at 13-7 here at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Honolulu. McCoy looks past throws, and it is broken up. It was red. There is a penalty flag thrown by the line judge. I think it's going to be defensive pass interference or defensive holding. I mean, it, you know, the problem with playing against Navy, you don't expect them to throw the ball very much, and the receivers block so much coming right off the line of scrimmage that you're kind of protecting yourself. You don't know when to expect pass. This time, Cal defensive backs got caught expecting to run, thinking they were getting blocked, ended up defensive holding. I wonder if it was offsides, oh. too. That's what it was, and that'll be the first down. Yep. It was, uh, there was an offside infraction on the play, and so the ball will be brought to the 13-yard line, where it is first down now for the Naval Academy. Well, the middies, with a lot of their friends here in the stands, Pearl Harbor, not far away, and then a lot to the team when they were able to visit the memorial earlier. Now McCoy looks out at the defense here with a first down for Navy. Nelson hit it to the 10-yard line. It'll be second down. Obviously, Navy can make a first down inside the three-yard line. That was Evan Collins out of Santa Rosa, California, the senior defensive lineman, making the stop for the Bears. You know, it's, it's interesting, the thing about Navy and talking to Tom Homo, the defensive coordinator at Cal, he said the other thing that happens, they kind of lull you to sleep. You think you're defending the option pretty well. You think you've got it handled, and boom, they're just reading what you do, and then they hit you with a big play. We saw that on the throwback by McCoy. There is a beautiful piece of work with McGrew winding up with the ball and out of bounds. Apparently, it appeared to be just short of that first down area with the final seconds of the first quarter ticking away here. That's pretty good open field tackle by Marquis Smith, the strong safety also, because he was sized up out there with McGrew. And McGrew, a very difficult guy to tackle. Only 204 yards on the season, but a very hard runner, a good average per carry. Nice job by Marquis Smith taking him out of bounds short of the first down. Well, third and one. Let's see if McCoy puts it in his hands on a quarterback throw or an option. Nelson behind him. He'll make the call at the line of scrimmage. And be ready to go against this defense. Nelson, and he is right at that spot for a first down here on third down. Of course, they're in four-down territory with Rasheed Hibbler out of Beverly Hills, California, making a fine tackle. First down. 
So it will be first and goal and four downs now for Navy to regain the lead. Here you see Hibbler now. He's in pretty good position, but again, that's a hard-running fullback. Hibbler did everything right. He was in position, but he tried to tackle Nelson high, and that enabled Nelson to keep his legs moving and get past the first down marker. And that's the end of the first quarter. The lead changed hands twice. Now, when you come back to start the second 15 minutes, it may change still again. Season's greetings from the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. People call you guys bunny spotters, is that right? Bunny spotters. I think that it trivializes what we do. It's much larger than that. I mean, once you've seen it, you can never go back. There's no other pink like that. He's been through here. Bum bum. You see anything yet? Bum bum. Bum bum. I've seen it 16 times. To watch somebody find it, see it for the first time. I feel very fortunate to be here because, you know, when we're all gone, I'm still going to be out there. Jesse. Jesse, you're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. The ocean, the source of life on planet Earth. Get ready to own it. Battleship CD-ROM, it's all-out sink or swim naval strategy. High-res 3D graphics, 16-bit audio effects, and nerve-wracking real-time battle. You're being attacked while you're attacking. Fight above and below the water in 2,000 square miles of ocean. Even battle around the globe, on land or modem to modem. You can rule the high seas, or you might end up treading water. Battleship on CD-ROM. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the ocean. Just ask your doctor. Bayer, powerful pain relief and so much more. Now try extra strength Bayer PM, the only aspirin that gently helps you sleep. Welcome back to the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Todd Blackledge, Dean Blevins, I'm Brent Musburger. Merry Christmas, everybody. California leads Navy 13-7, but Navy is threatening as we start the second 15 minutes. down for Navy. The blocking back, Will Smith from Decatur, Georgia, over on the left wing. Nelson, the fullback. McCoy, the quarterback. McCoy slipped as he tried to make the cut. It'll be second and goal. Take a look at the numbers in the first half. Pretty much just about the way you would expect it. 108 yards for Cal, 74 yards rushing for Navy, but the surprising number, 109 yards passing for Navy. A couple big plays by Chris McCoy fooled the Cal defense with the passing game. Second end goal for McCoy. He rides the fullback, and again, he is jammed up right at the goal line. So he kept it again himself, and it will be third and goal. This is just kind of a little follow play. He's still going to fake it to the fullback and then just kind of try to fall right in behind him. But a good job again by Rashid Hibbler in there at the inside linebacker. Stops him short of the goal line. That's two times in a row, once to the left and once to the right. They just tried to let McCoy follow the fullback in for the touchdown. But good defense on the goal line by Cal. I expect him maybe to go outside with this one. McGrew over on the right wing, Smith on the left, and Nelson behind McCoy, who does barge into the end zone this time. There's the touchdown, and the lead is regained by the Naval Academy. Tom 
Vanderhorst. And he makes good on this. The difference will be a botched snap on the first extra point attempted by California. After the Bears return the opening kickoff for a touchdown, Vanderhorst has been good on his two extra points. And Navy leads it by that margin, 14-13 for Coach Weatherby. They tried to go with the fake a couple times. This time, McCoy is just going to come off the outside. You can see good surge by the left guard in the center. Watch McCoy right between, kind of a wedge there between the left guard and the center. Gets in right behind it, gets the ball across the end zone. They tried to be a little delay play where he faked it to the fullback and followed in on two consecutive plays. That time, the quick hitter between the left guard and center for the touchdown. Big day coming up on... Wednesday, the Tournament of Roses Parade starts New Year's Day off on ABC at 11 Eastern time. Then the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, Tennessee against Northwestern. Then it will be over to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Arizona State, hoping to win a national championship, takes its unbeaten record against Ohio State in Pasadena. We'll hear from Arizona State coach Bruce Snyder at halftime here today of the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl. Well, a little bit of a breeze now. It shoots his face. So the Cal receivers come out to the five yard line. So it's Pat Barnes' turn here, Todd. Well, Cal has been able to move the football. That has not been a problem. They obviously got their first touchdown on the kickoff return, but Pat Barnes, again, is uh, working this offense very efficiently. Eight of nine, 108 yards, and one touchdown. And again, Navy's having some problem getting pressure on Barnes. When they've been able to put some pressure on, they've been able to make some plays. But when they give him time to just sit back there and read, uh, the wide receivers are too good, and he's too accurate of a thrower to hope to stop him that way. to the 23-yard line. And the stop is made by Travis Cooley, the junior from Ashland, Oregon. Now there was a point in time in the season when Cal was as good of offensive football team as anybody in the country. And there's six wins. You can see what they did running the football. Only eight sacks allowed. 33 sacks allowed in their last five ball games. So they had problems holding on to the football and protecting the board. Second and seven. Dropped by Shaw at the 30-yard line. That's a simple case of a receiver wanting to run before he has the catch. That's all that happened to Bobby Shaw there. He just lost his concentration for a half a second, thinking about turning and making a move on the defender. You can see he didn't drop many this year. 58 catches. Nine of those for touchdowns for Cal. Navy hoping for some three and outs. Let's see if they could get their first here on third and seven. to punt. That was a good job by Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator of Navy, because they showed blitz. I think Cal was anticipating blitz. They were going for a quick throw to beat the blitz, and Navy dropped out into zone. You can see the throw to Benjamin is low, a little bit of contact, but really a bad throw that time by Pat Barnes to Benjamin. You look from behind Ryan Longwell, the senior from Bend, Oregon. it off in the face of pressure. Scott for Navy, blinded by the sun. And this ball will be downed at the five-yard line. He looked up and saw the sun, and it's a fierce one here in Honolulu today. And rather than have the ball accidentally hit him, 
He simply dashed over to the sideline and the coaches down below are telling him he did the right thing. Even though it gives Navy horrible field position. Let's make or break some Christmas dear. I know the the warmest aloha from the Sheraton hotels that call Waikiki Beach home. The Sheraton Waikiki. The Royal Hawaiian. The Sheraton Moana Surfrider. The Sheraton Princess Kaiulani. Let Sheraton turn the world's most famous beach into your own tropical paradise. Come celebrate aloha with Sheraton. For reservations, call 1-800-STAY-ITT. At Transamerica, we've helped a million people live a better life with consumer loans. And millions more plan for retirement. We've provided the security of life insurance for 15 million lives. And provided millions to finance educations. We also underwrite hopes and dreams. Transamerica. Life insurance, retirement plans, commercial and consumer loans. The game has begun. Who is flying the aircraft? That would be me. The clock is ticking. It's crazy. This is bad. On January 10th. Miss, let's delay our flight. I'm calm. Get ready. <laughs> for the ultimate. I'm going to crash the plane. Touchdown. Let's play! <laughs> Bring it on. Starts January 10th. ABC Thursday. Now! One of the most magical adventures ever. Hulk versus Pe Let's go, Dave! Sure reminds you of a playoff scene in Green Bay, Wisconsin, doesn't it, Todd? <laughs> Yeah, there's a couple places. Buffalo and Pittsburgh are all going to be cold places for playoffs this week. Merry Christmas, everybody. Here's Chris McCoy's numbers, and look at that. He's out passing his running. Yeah, that's the real surprise for Navy right now, and he's made some tough throws, some good throws for this Navy office, and that just helps everything else that they want to do with the football. Number seven. They're back to court and back to Navy next season. Field and a penalty flag flying as he was tackled at the 49 yard line. Perhaps an inadvertent face mask. Let's hold on and wait and see. Chris McCoy is really doing a nice job audibling at the line of scrimmage and getting them into the right plays. That was a, a different formation for Navy. This was more of a passing formation. They split the option formation. It's a nice little trap on the inside. Straight give to the fullback, and Nelson showing a little speed, outrunning a couple of the linebackers, but couldn't run out the defensive back, Sirwanga. You can see the face mask at the end of the play, but really a, a big play for the fullback, Omar Nelson, to get out of their own end zone. So a 44-yard run, tack on five, and that's a way to overcome that 72-yard punt of a few minutes ago. First down for McCoy and Navy. Navy leads Cal by one. Remember, their defense just forced the three and out. Quarterback Troy is red, battles his way back to the line of scrimmage, makes the most out of that play. Should mention that if you take a look at Charlie Weatherby, he'll lose his offensive coordinator after this game. Paul Johnson, who is the Navy offensive coordinator, is already taking the job as the head coach at Georgia Southern. He will be moving on uh, in the Division I AA as a head coach. He was an assistant coach there for several years and really started this option offense at Georgia Southern. He also was a coach at Hawaii and ran the same offense and has been very successful running it here with the Naval Academy. Second down and nine. Navy leading at 14-13. There is a pitch out wide. Again, the ball fake drew the defenders right into the middle with that ball handling, and Pat McGrew of Silas, Alabama, winding up with it outside. Yeah, it's interesting that Johnson's going down to Georgia Southern. Let's watch this play a moment. Take a look at Rose. Now, again, we mentioned somebody has to have the fullback, somebody has to have the quarterback. That's Rose's responsibility, and he does a nice job forcing the bad pitch by Chris McCoy. That enabled the rest of the Cal defense and stopped that from being a big play. Matt Beck. 
stop defensively. It is third down for Navy. Yeah, Coach Johnson goes down to Statesboro, said he was just going to take his pickup truck on down there and see the good old boys. McCoy left covered. Wide open is his receiver. First down. McGrew cuts back <laughs> to the four yard line. First and goal as Pat McGrew, the junior from Alabama, gets the job done. And it is the right arm of McCoy that is lighting up this Christmas day in Honolulu. Doing a real nice job finding himself some space in the pocket and doing a nice job finding an opening. Now watch McGrew after the catch. He knows he's got to get another yard for the first down, so he does a great job of just turning right upfield. But when he's not tackled, he says, hey, I can get more than a first down. I'll turn this into a big play. Shows a little speed then running away from defenders. Nice job by McGrew, not only getting the first down, but making it a big play. Tim Canada in at fullback behind McCoy. Here is the touchdown as Scott walks in. Ross Scott, senior from Hawkinsville, Georgia. And Navy drives 95 yards for this touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one way to erase the bad memories of another loss to Army. Vanderhorst. He missed an early field goal, but he's been perfect on his extra points. 21 to 13. 34 points already on the board here at the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl. Sail on the horizon. One of my customers was telling me that he never knew what was going to break next on his car. But at least he knew this. Whatever it was, Napa would have the parts to fix it. Now there's an easier way to buy the parts you need at Napa. The Napa card. An instant line of credit that gives you 90 days same as cash on purchases over $200. Plus it's good at thousands of Napa auto parts stores and Napa auto care centers. The Napa card. Another way Napa keeps America running. America runs. Jacksonville Jaguars head north to meet the veteran Buffalo Bills. It's game one of an NFL wildcard doubleheader Saturday on ABC Sports. Hi, I'm Steve Mariucci, head football coach of the California Golden Bears. My family and I would like to wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Aloha! A Christmas greeting from the islands, the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl. Steve trailing here, 21-13. One thing to keep in mind right now as this game is unfolding is that one of California's touchdowns, in fact, their first one, was a kickoff return. Barnes and this ballyhooed passing attack, they have not lit up the Navy defensive unit like we expected so far. It is 21-13. This kickoff is going to be fielded at the 8-yard line by O'Neill, who returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. He takes this one to the 28-yard line, where it'll be first down. 
Take a look at the touchdown again. Now watch the blocks by the wide receivers. Here's Howard Bryant. This is Neil Plasconis. Watch the blocks. If you want to be effective running the option, your slot backs and your wide receivers have to block well. Both of them are going to get outstanding blocks. The pitch is forced, and he's got a clean alley into the end zone. That's just great work by your slot back and your wide receiver providing an alley for the touchdown run by Scott. Ready to go without a huddle at Brandon Willis. In at the running back on this draw. And he is slammed. And I want to tell you another thing about Navy's defensive players. When they make a hit, you hear it up here. That time it was Michael Ogden, number 92, with 97, Jason Snyder of MacArthur, Ohio. And here you can see Ogden, who came in with an injury. They were hopeful that he could play. You can see that ankle is already taped up. A lot of tape on that. Ankle. And now he has been forced to the sideline after re-injuring it. You know, you're talking about Cal Barnes, uh, Barnes and the Cal offense not having the kind of day we expected, only 100 yards of total offense. I think that they can throw deep on Navy. I, I really think that they've got better speed out on the outside, that they can try to throw the ball vertically as opposed to just with some of the, the crossing inside stuff. Nate Johnston in. Barnes rolls the passing game to the right. He'll have to take it himself, and he is out of bounds. California thought he might have been pushed out a little bit late by Tom Poulter. That's very well defended by Navy because one of the things that Pat Barnes does well is the bootleg. This is Travis Cooley at the end of the play. Let's take a look and see. Gives him a little tap there on the white. Did have both feet in the white, but it wasn't a real vicious kind of hit. Merry Christmas to Pat Barnes. <laughs> You're right. These guys will hit you. I mean, they, they enjoy the contact. These Navy defensive football players. Third down and four. The ball at the 33-yard line. Barnes in trouble again. On the move. Throws to Gonzalez for the first down at the 47-yard line. So that time the quarterback doing a good job. He was forced to improvise. He has very good mobility for a guy his size. He's six foot four, 215 pounds, but he does have a nice feel for where he's at in the pocket, and he has good enough quickness in his feet to get outside by himself a little extra time. That time he did that, enabling him to get the pass downfield to Gonzalez. 9.06 remaining here in the first half from the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl. California trailing it, 21 to 13. Nobody's covering him. Willis just short of midfield. Clint Bruce with another stop for Navy. You know, Brent, when we talked to Dick Bumpus, the Navy defensive coordinator yesterday, he said his biggest concern was not giving up the big play. Now, Navy has given up the big play on the kickoff return, but his defense has not given up the big play so far. They've come up with some good plays on third down and stopped a couple of these Cal drives. And well short of the first down. That's only for a couple of yards. And Sean Bullard, the senior from Oakland, California, with his first catch of the day. Well, a treat tomorrow. Dustin Hoffman in hook at 8 Eastern here on ABC. Third down and six for Barnes and the Bears. Got that one easily. He hit Kofi Narti. Uh, he was injured earlier this season, and Narti playing today because Patrick Young injured his ankle in practice, and so Narti into the wide receiver rotation, and we can see the defensive player. Michael Ogden headed for the Navy locker room. Nice throw that time on third down by Barnes. One of the things that, that, that Cal has done very well this year is their third down conversions up around 44%, a real improvement over the last couple of years with Steve Mariucci bringing in his new system. O'Neill back in the game to the 28-yard line. O'Neill forced to pick up the running slack because Tarek Smith went down early this year with an injury for California. Smith was a splendid tailback. 
hard to believe that this offense would have been any more potent, but it would have been had he stayed healthy. Yeah, he was really off to a great start. Was one of the premier running backs in all of college football before he got hurt. And they really like O'Neal, but again, he had some fumble problems late in the year. To the 24-yard line. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, there's one player on the field today for California from Hawaii, Drake Parker. Come on by, sir. Uh, he's from Hawaii. He has a, he bought 170 tickets from his teammates. And this is his mom and dad, David and Pat. And this is part of the contingent. 170 tickets for this guy. No ticket scam, by the way, Brent. Don't get anything started here. Stick right there with the... Uh, with the parents and uh, let's just isolate uh, a camera here Mr. Blackledge and uh, <laughs> and watch the young man who had to uh, come up with all those tickets you can see the officials have called for a measurement here there is a big connection with the Navy coaching staff and this city and the stadium also yeah four of their assistant coaches are making return trips to Hawaii Paul Johnson was the offensive coordinator here at Hawaii, their running back coach, Ken Niamatololo, who will now be the offensive coordinator at Navy. He was a played high school here at Radford High School, also played for Hawaii, he was an assistant coach. Brian Norwood, their cornerback coach at Navy, he was also a, a graduate of Radford High School and played for the University of Hawaii. So a lot of guys coming back, a, a real nice homecoming for those coaches from Navy, as well as this guy, Drake Parker, for California. Well, Parker will have to dig in here. It is third down and short. He's next to Tariq Glenn, 350-pound tackle. So that's over 600 pounds there on that side. You can see Parker, number 78, get down. Runs for the first down at the 21-yard line. Let's go back to Dean. Cut-off block on the backside by Parker. They went away from the two big guys, Glenn and Park, but he did his job there, getting the cutoff block on the backside. It's a big trip for the young man, is it? Come back here. First down for Cal at the 21-yard line. Wide open touchdown. California with Sean Bullard. Sun did an excellent job on pass protection. Barnes did not have a man lay a fingertip on him that time. And they'll go for two in the tie. Talked about Navy trying to avoid giving up the big play. This was just a situation in the West Coast offense. One of the things you try to do is find favorable matchups. That time they found it with their tight end, Sean Bullard, working against Travis Cooley, the linebacker, in man-to-man -man coverage. And Pat Barnes did a nice job finding where to go with the football. You want to create matchups and then use them to your advantage. This for the tie, and Niall Benjamin lines up as a running back and then goes in motion to the right. Barnes rolls, wide open, could have run for it, but instead he throws for it. It was just a little bit quicker that way. Benjamin opened, but Barnes could have stepped in himself, and we're deadlocked at 21. 42 points have been scored here in the first half of the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Trust. We are not born with an instinct to trust. Trust must be earned. Trust must be proven. We earn it with integrity. We prove it with sound advice. Trust is the ultimate measure of our success. And at Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. These are the biggest feet in pro basketball. Shoe size 21. If you think the shoes are hard to fill, imagine what it takes to fill the rest of it. Big boy. Well, new cheese tortellini from Chunky foots the bill. It's loaded with giant ring-shaped pasta stuffed with cheese, plus huge chunks of chicken and tons of vegetables. So if you've got a giant appetite to feed, Chunky Cheese Tortellini scores with the big boys. Satisfied? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. Okay, now don't get Grandma too excited. That's right, the poor deer is probably a bit weak. She has been running on the same Duracell battery since the Ice Age. <laughs> wow. Those 
motor cell battery sure do last. The copper top, no battery is stronger, longer. ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl brought to you by Head and Shoulders because great hair can't have flakes. And Transamerica, the power of the pyramid is working for you. And what a pleasant place to come for your honeymoon here to the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. And there are some Packer fans. Steve Mariucci a year ago was coaching number four up at Green Bay. He was a member of that coaching staff before taking the head coaching job at Berkeley. And it has been a turnaround campaign for the Bears, although they did not close out the season nearly as effectively as they started it. Longwell to kick it off. Tied at 21 here in Honolulu. And Navy will bring it out on the 20-yard line. I'll show you what Navy anticipated on this play. When Cal lined up in this formation on the touchdown, they were expecting them to throw to the strong side. Here's two receivers, and this is Gonzalez. So Navy decides to blitz from the back side, but Barnes is looking for the blitz. They're actually looking for the matchup on the back side. He goes away from strength, throws it to Bullard, who has man-to-man -man coverage with Travis Cooley, and that's a good matchup for Cal. Good read of the blitz by Barnes, good execution by Barnes and Bullard. Mariucci and his staff colorfully attired here in Honolulu today. Strange to see him without shirt and tie. Ship moving in motion. They're going to bring it end around on this. Mascones, nothing doing. California was ready for it. They make the stop at the 12-yard line. He is really, Pat Barnes, a quarterback for Cal, has really flourished under this system. You know, he said he kept a journal. He had kind of a, a six or seven month window starting from last February when the staff was in place all the way through spring, all the way through summer where he could learn this offense and he kept a journal and all the little tidbits he could pick up on how to play the position of quarterback, he's kept that with him and it has really paid off. The work he put in has paid off this season. Whistle before the snap. Dead ball foul here. First time Navy has gone backwards on offense on this series. Offense, five yard penalty, down remains second. Retaping the ankle, Ogden emerging again from the locker room of Navy. The defensive lineman. This is not unusual. We heard some stories yesterday of guys with broken hands and come back and get screws in their hands and come back and play the next week and teeth knocked out and all kind of stuff. These guys, it's not it's gonna take a lot more than that to keep them out of a football game. Second and 17. And McCoy under pressure gets it off. Incomplete at the 41-yard line, and with authority, Corey Shim went after that forward pass, which was thrown in desperation by number seven. Don Lonnan, the defensive back, still down at the 45-yard line. This was a very risky throw by Chris McCoy because he, he probably should have just tried to throw, to throw it away somewhere, kind of threw it up for grabs, and Corey Shem does a nice job turning into a defender. Watch, he knows that at this point, Shem becomes not a receiver, but a defender. Prevent the interception, not concentrate on making the completion. That's good work by Corey Shem helping out his quarterback, Chris McCoy, who probably shouldn't have thrown that ball there. McCoy's first incompletion, 4 of 5 on his four previous passes, 145 yards in offense for Navy. And Lonnet. Headed off to the sideline after being injured. Derek Gardner, number 31, will be in at one corner for the Bears. Marquis Smith, number nine in that defensive backfield. You see Gardner and uh, Pete DeStefano. Redshirt freshman from San Jose is a free safety back. 
a couple of years, this should be some talented defense at Berkeley, but it's young and inexperienced. Lost a couple of big name fellows to the professional ranks at the end of last year. Three deep across the board against this passing situation. McCoy's in trouble. Gets it off in time beautifully to Nelson going down at Nelson with a penalty flag. Nelson is hit at the 26 yard line. And a penalty here against Cal would be extremely costly. Unless it's an illegal block. Yep, it was. I think they got David Loya, number 73, for an illegal block in the back, right towards the end of the play. Again, McCoy does a great job just getting this pass off. Under pressure at his goal line, makes a nice throw on the screen. Now, Nelson has a couple blockers in front. Watch 73 coming into your screen. Right there he is on the ground. Had, had got an illegal block in the back. Brings this play back. Good defensive series by Cal. The first time that they've really been able to shut down this Navy offense. Covarubias in the punt for Navy. Benjamin awaits a return. Shakes the first tackle. And out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Outstanding starting position here for Cal's offense. So we'll come back at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Navy and California are tied at 21. Merry Christmas, everybody. Over the years, Jeep engineers have made some amazing discoveries. We found it. Yeah the perfect power to traction ratio and one discovery led to another wow increasing the suspension geometry really improves stability out here jeep grand cherokee when it comes to making a great 4x4 even better amazing the response time of the heated seats yeah our engineers never miss a thing people keep asking me how does it feel to be steve young <laughs> frankly it hurts. Give me my Advil. Medical studies prove on tough pain, two Advil work better than any two Tylenol. No wonder for sore muscles, more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever. Nasty game. Advil just works better. And for a cold, try Advil cold and sinus. It's tough on colds like Advil is on pain. Give me a large fry supersize. I got it. Watch it. It's time to pick the 97 NBA All-Star team. Anything the kid wants. And well, you can vote for your favorite players. I love the haircut, man. Where they serve America's favorite fries, McDonald's. Vote today. It's your world, baby. When sports cream, when legs are sore, when backs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Rubbing it in brings fast pain relief. No medicine is smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. Welcome back to Honolulu, everybody. And uh, Todd, I think you're expecting a long pass here. If you don't get that soon, you're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> no, I really think Cal may try to go for the end zone right here. We've, we've seen what we expected. Both offenses able to move the football, both defenses trying to find some answers. All right. Colorful holiday here in Honolulu. 35 yards away for California's offense. They will run with O'Neal, who returned the opening kickoff for the touchdown to start it off. And now we're deadlocked at 21. It'll be second down for Cal coming up. Just to break up the monotony of things, Cal calls an occasional running play. <laughs> Well, and again, part of the, the success of the West Coast offense is keeping a defense off balance. And the only way you do that is by mixing the run and the pass effectively. We saw a graphic earlier. Early in the season, they had great ability to run and throw the football. They've lost a little bit of that ability to run the football here late in the year. O'Neal explodes. Five dives. In zone. Touchdown. His second six-pointer of the day. So the freshman, Delta O'Neal, adds on a 31-yard touchdown run 
to his early 100 yarder on a kickoff return. on another one. It's a seven-point Cal lead. Their biggest lead of the day because remember they botched their first extra point so it's 28-21. Again we take a look at the explosiveness of O'Neal. Watch the block bar guy Drake Parker. He does a nice job coming off in the linebacker. Jeremy Newberry the center gets a good block and then it's just speed and quickness to the end zone for O'Neal. He's got that explosive ability just a young running back learning how to play the game. Take a look again. Once he gets past the first wave, then he makes the nice move to the outside, puts a good move on Sean Andrews, number 29, and then it's speed to the corner of the end zone. Of the first five games of the year, Cal was averaging almost 190 yards, 193 yards a game rushing. In the last five games, 67 yards a game rushing. So uh, this is a part of their offense that they really struggled with late in the year, but they're a little healthier now. They've had a little more of a chance to kind of get back in focus of what they like to do offensively. And so far, uh, Delta O'Neal has given them some good running today uh, in this first half. Longwell. Hunter from the one. 15. The 25. And we go down below to Dean Blevins, Dean. Guys, a minute ago you saw Lonnan injured, the defensive back for California. He came out and a hip was hurt. He landed on his hip. He was down here on the ground with the ice on him. Looked really bad. And his secondary coach, Dwayne Walker, came over and said, you have no option. You're going to play. The guy was running about 30 seconds later, and now he's back on the field, number seven. So there's your answer. Coach, coaches keep him in the game. Here he is on the left defensive corner for Cal. And he'll line up against LeBron Butts of San Diego, the junior wide receiver on the short side of the field here on first down for Navy. McCoy steps for three yards. Well, again, a reminder, the Jaguars are in Buffalo to play the Bills. That's the playoff opener of the National Football League at 12 Eastern. Four games coming up this weekend, the first two on ABC. Vikings will play the Cowboys at 3.30 Eastern time. Well, that Jags-Bill game is really uh, the old guard versus the new Bucks, isn't it? Mark Brunel is a good-looking young quarterback for Jacksonville. Second down and seven. McCoy in trouble, keeps it, spins away, and he's down at the 30-yard line. This will be about third and five coming up for Navy. Andre Rhodes, number 11. He's an outside linebacker from Los Angeles who made perhaps the biggest tackle of the year for the Golden Bears. That came in that wild and woolly four-overtime game against Arizona when Arizona, after tying it at the fourth overtime, suddenly went for the win, a two-point conversion where the holder just tossed the ball over his head and the kicker was supposed to walk in. He would have walked in, except Rhodes said, hold on here. And he was the only bear and who could have stopped him, and he did. So it is third down for Navy. Coy back again, dumps middle, got it, Jim loose midfield. 40, 30, makes a quick move. 10, cuts again to the seven yard line. Chris McCoy has been incredibly impressive so far in this ball game, throwing the football. We've seen him throw the ball down the field. This is a great touch throw. Now watch as the receiver, Shem, is gonna come out of the backfield on a little crossing route. Watch the touch demonstrated by McCoy. He just kind of lofts it over the defensive line. Perfect touch. Let Shem catch it on the move, and then Shem showing he knows what to do with the football when he has it in his hands. But that was a great touch throw by Chris McCoy. Wide spacing by the offensive line. Bryant goes back to the left wing on first and goal. Timeout is called by McCoy. McCoy uses another one at the line of scrimmage here with 125 left in the first half. Down by seven. 
He'll come over to the sideline and we'll take a break from the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. California leads it, but Navy is threatening. People keep asking me, how does it feel to be Steve Young? <laughs> Frankly, it hurts. Give me my Advil. Medical studies prove on tough pain, two Advil work better than any two Tylenol. No wonder for sore muscles, more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever. Nasty game. Advil just works better. And for a cold, try Advil cold and sinus. It's tough on colds like Advil is on pain. Get a big screen TV at a price you won't lose any sleep over. Circuit City, you can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. Friday, could a little more height get a man more respect, more money, and even love? 2020 asked women to judge men, short and tall. It is really one of the last forms of discrimination that exists. Wait till you see what happened. Friday on ABC. That was McCoy on a keeper over to the left side. The best tackle that play was almost made by our red hat who was going after <laughs> the referee to say we are still coming out of the motion. Go after him, Dave Handy. You got to blitz him. You got to get right on him, partner. Startling number for Navy today. 220 yards passing. Their previous high, 218 against Notre Dame. And Chris McCoy doing it all, 6 of 7. Ben Faye supposedly was the better thrower of the two quarterbacks. Hard time convincing us of that today. Second down and goal for Navy. California's best defense has been down by the goal line, but that time they were unable to stop it. Another Navy touchdown on the ground. Horse kicking for the tie. Again, we're seeing that missing link there for the Cal defense, Brandon Whiting. A lot of those key plays down by the goal line have come right between the two guards in the center, right where Whiting would have been. Deadlocked at 28. That's 56 points here in the first half. Last year was the highest scoring Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl ever. Kansas and UCLA scored 81 points. This first half total is the third highest total in Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl history. So regardless of what happens in the second half, and folks, we don't expect a 0-0 tie. <laughs> this is already in the record book. We have had the longest kickoff return in the history of the Aloha Bowl, 100 yards by O'Neill to start the game. He also has scored two touchdowns, and at halftime, uh, I'll have an opportunity to ask Todd about the upcoming playoff games. Todd also traveled down to Tempe to talk to a Dan, who did a heck of a job down at Arizona State after leaving California. That Bruce Snyder, who will take the Sun Devils back to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, you're wondering, why am I saying back? Well, he was there earlier this year to play a Pac-10 game against UCLA, in which the Bruins put him down big time. And the Sun Devils rallied behind Jake Plummer. In fact, a throwback pass to the Arizona State quarterback might have been one of their biggest plays of the season. That, of course, and that dramatic opening game victory against Washington. Obermeyes, the punter, in with a short kickoff, and Bullard, the tight end, brings it to the 39-yard line. Is there enough time left at 34 seconds? You bet there is. It yeah. would take Cal only one play to go the distance. And, and also factor in the fact that Cal has not used any of their timeouts, so they have all three timeouts remaining with 34 seconds left in this first half. Definitely in a good position to try to get at least an attempt at a field goal to take the lead before half. Three. Three, 
a nightmare game for defensive coordinators. <laughs> One they will not be putting on their resume anytime soon. First down and 10. And Barnes to go to work. To the 45-yard line. And because it's a first down in the college game, the clock is stopped. Niall Benjamin was the receiver. And that really is a favorable rule for offenses in college football, that the clock does stop when you get a first down. allows you to get right up to the line of scrimmage and go. Barnes does just that, and Gonzalez finally pushed out of bounds and stopping it again at the 30-yard line. So we started with 34 seconds. California has used 14 seconds. There are 20 seconds left, and the Bears threatening again. It's like a fast-break offense in basketball. You just can't relax on defense. You think you've played okay in the first half. They're inside of a minute. Let's go in and get some Gatorade, but you cannot relax against this kind of offense. Slot to the right. Barnes looks in that direction. Fires complete. That one's short of the first down. Let's see where they spot it, however. Hold on. They might have gotten it right at the first down marker, and the timeout is called with 11 seconds to go. And, Todd, what you pointed out, very important right here. Just use a timeout regardless of whether or not we get the first down. You want to try to save at least one of your timeouts to the very end in case you have to bring your field goal kicking unit on the field. You don't want to have them have to have them run onto the field and line up and kick it in a hurry. So you want to try to save at least one timeout. But Cal, very good use of their timeouts in the first half. They can they got a lot of options right now. All right, I'm going to bring in the quarterback, Mr. Blackledge here. Now you got 11 seconds to go. You got looks like a second down and it. What can you do with this amount of time and the timeouts that you have left here, Todd? Well, you've got two timeouts. I think you can throw the ball anywhere on the field that you want to because you've got the two timeouts. Uh, you've got enough time maybe for two quick plays with 11 seconds, but if you want to throw a, a route into the end zone, you may only have time for one shot at it and then line up to kick your field goal. Shaw, Douglas, Benjamin, the wideouts. Keep a fullback, Vera, apparently in the block, although Cal will occasionally throw to the fullback. They slip him into the formation, fire in his own touchdown, and it was Bobby Shaw, the junior from San Francisco, and that is his second today. 34 seconds, but they've left Navy with five. There's still time for the midshipmen. <laughs> Boy, that's a good two-minute drive or a 35-second drive by the Cal offense. Great execution by Pat Barnes running the team on the field. And so the gate comes swinging over. And Ryan Longville, Longwell kicking for another seven-point lead for the Bears. We're after that scoring record in the first half. 35 to 28. 63 points. What is this? A whack regular season game we're looking at here, Todd? Both teams can score. Both teams can move the football. It's just going to be a matter of who has the football last, I think, in terms of who's going to win this game. That's really good work by Pat Barnes. Again, he has really flourished in this system. And as you mentioned, he had plenty of time. He had three timeouts, 35 seconds. And because they had two timeouts on this last play, it didn't eliminate any part of the field to try to throw the ball. Usually, if you don't have timeouts, you can't throw to the middle of the field and stop the clock. Barnes is able to set up, take one good shot at the end zone, and makes the nice throw to Shaw. We want to pass along a very special Christmas greeting, too, because Shaw's grandmother is in a nursing home because of illness. And he asked if we wouldn't give her a very special Merry Christmas from her grandson. And I dare say that two touchdowns by Bobby Shaw of San Francisco have made her feel much better on this day. So Merry Christmas, Grandma. Grandson is having a whale of an afternoon here at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Thirty-five twenty-eight. Final five seconds. So this will do it. Heaven. Astor Heaven. 
returning the ball to end the first half. And here in Honolulu at the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl, as expected, it's all offense. California leading Navy, 35-28. We will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. None for me, thanks. Why? Dairy foods do a number on my stomach. You lactose intolerant? Huh? You know, gas, bloating. I get it too, but it's no problem anymore. Try this. Introducing Lactate Ultra. One little caplet just before eating lets you digest dairy foods easily and naturally. Mmm. Next time, let's go for milkshakes. With a little Lactate Ultra on the side. New Lactate Ultra. Go on, enjoy dairy again. Want whiter teeth in just two weeks? Then try Arm & Hammer Extra Whitening, the baking soda formula clinically proven to whiten teeth in two weeks. Arm & Hammer Extra Whitening, whiter teeth in just two weeks. All set? You bet I am, thanks to you. A few weeks ago with Jesse, I noticed something, dandruff. So I told him about Head & Shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away. Head & Shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. Because great hair can't have flakes. Hi. Sorry, never guessed my brakes would go out on the biggest Dummy. day of my life. You should have gone to Midas. Th that's a very good idea, and I will after this. Oh. Hi. You, you look nice. For a thorough brake inspection, come to Midas. We'll explain your options. It's the Midas way. A better system for you and your car. Do you take this man to be your husband? Midas. Auto systems experts. Saturday, we'll wrap up your holiday with two brand new specials. First, it's today's hottest stars featuring Drew Carey, Caesar's Palace 30th Anniversary Celebration. Then it's the greatest names in American music as Nissan presents a celebration of America's music. It's a night of spectacular entertainment with two brand new specials, Saturday on ABC. I'm Charles Gibson. And I'm Joan London. From our family here at ABC's Good Morning America to yours. Here's hoping your holidays are everything you dreamed they would be. Benson, Ingram, Park, here, and clearance. Three million dollars in new vehicles and another one million in used. There's too much to carry into next year's inventory. So we need to sell them now at insane prices. 97 Plymouth Neons, $1.99 a month. 97 Grand Cherokees, $2.99 a month and zero down. Over 75 minivans, clearance price like a 97 Voyager, $2.99 a month. It's our annual year and clearance till New Year's Eve at Benson, Ingram, Park, Chrysler, Plymouth, Chief Eagle. Hey, our internal auditors have spoken. They've told us that Fiesta is glutted with inventory, and they say we must sell 300 vehicles by New Year's Eve. Well, there's only one way to do that, and that's mark them down, pull out all the stops, and offer you the lowest prices of the year. Right now, you enjoy ridiculously low prices on all 850 vehicles in stock. That's everything, all new Dodges, Lincolns, Mercury's, and used cars, priced to sell right now. Plus, you make no payments till March. 300 units have to go, and your timing could not be better than right now at Fiesta. ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl brought to you by Gillette Sensor XL and the Gillette Series. Gillette, the best a man can get. Wild offensive show here so far in the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. 35-28, California leading baby. What a wonderful Christmas this is over here. And I uh, want to thank all the fellas for buying me a little Christmas <laughs> shade here. Thank you very much. It's very Todd. nice. Todd, now you were down in Tempe talking to Arizona State. What kind of a mood did you find down there as they get ready now for the Rose Bowl? Well, there's a couple things real obvious in talking to Bruce Snyder. Number one, he's had a great time coaching this team. Number two, he really believes in the chemistry they have, players and coaches. And he's really looking forward to the shot at the Buckeyes. Looking at Ohio State, looking at both sides of the ball, uh, what concerns you about the Buckeyes? Well, I, I yeah, they're, first of all, they're very athletic, and they're they're big. And st they look big and strong to me as I watch them on tape, uh, particularly their offensive line. But these are the keys, it seems to me, if, uh, is Pepe Pearson, uh, their tailback, and the offensive line, if they can capture the line of scrimmage then we're going to have a, it's going to be a tough day uh, controlling their offense. So how do we 
not allow Orlando Pace to grab us right by the throat and throw us on you know, his famous pancakes. You know, that, that's really big key for us. To me, that's on both sides of the ball, that's what it would be. Stopping their run, particularly their tailback, and capturing the line of scrimmage, being able to protect Jake on the offensive side. Getting ready for a bowl game is a different kind of preparation. Both you and Ohio State have had about a month to prepare. Does that hurt or hinder your football team? Uh, it, that's really going to be difficult to judge before we play. Um, my thinking for our team, I don't know about John's, but my thinking is that we're going to be ready to play. Now, we're, this team has that kind of mentality. Uh, I think we practice well. We're going to get focused in. I think when, when the ball's in the air now, we have not started games very well, but boy, we played the last two or three quarters very well. So I, I think we'll be fine. Talk a little bit about the Rose Bowl. How ironic is it that you're coaching against a guy who is the only coach to take Arizona State to a Rose Bowl? You know, there is there, there is some irony in it because I think there was, uh, people have talked about, I wasn't here, but some people have talked about when John left, um, that he left with Part, part of the reason was to go to some place that had a greater chance of winning the uh, national championship. And we are close to maybe being the national champion. I think he made the right decision for what he wanted to do, and I don't think I've, I've questioned that, but it, there is some irony in it. You mentioned the national championship. How disappointing will it be if you win this game, you finish undefeated, and don't share a part of the national championship? You know, I, 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 I refuse to be disappointed. I just, I'm not going to be depressed. I am not. Because the, the, if, if we go 12-0, and 0, I, am, I should be happy, <laughs> you know, and very, and which I will be, and I'll be very proud. Uh, I can't control the voting. You know, I, 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 I can't. Uh, we can just do what we can do. Uh, I, I do know this, that, that uh, we beat the, repeat, you know, the, the defending national champion by 19 points. Uh, and if we're able to be successful against Ohio State, they're very good. And if we win that game, um, we've beaten uh, five teams that have winning records, and we've beat them by quite a margin, all five of them. And so it seems to me that we have a legitimate, we would have a legitimate claim. But I do not, I refuse to be depressed, because how can you be depressed with 12-0? and You can't, I mean, I don't understand, well, I wouldn't understand it. So I'm going to celebrate, vote us number one, and go on about my business. They've had a wonderful year, but Todd, a lot of us have a question about Ohio State. Can they overcome the disappointment of losing that game to Michigan and come back in the Rose Bowl? Well, I think they can because they've played great defense all year, but one key for them, they must get better production at the quarterback position than they got against Michigan. Well, it's a very special day, Wednesday on the network at 11 a.m. Eastern time. You can start off by watching the Rose Bowl parade. This is truly one of the great spectacles in America, and it's always worth watching. Then our first game, Todd, will go down to the Comp USA Citrus Bowl down in Orlando, Florida. What about Northwestern? Can they stick with Tennessee? I think they can. Northwestern, the magic continues up in Evanston, but they will face in Peyton Manning the best quarterback that they've faced all season. It was Peyton Manning and Jay Graham playing a large role a year ago in Orlando when they beat Ohio State. Then we go back to Pasadena, and we will have, of course, the Rose Bowl. And what about Jake Plummer? Your thoughts about him? Well, I thought Jake Plummer was the best player in college football this season. I voted for him as the Heisman Trophy winner, a great leader on and off the field. They've got some speed on special teams, too. battle will take it all the way. Now, meanwhile, over on Ohio State side, you can't say enough about Orlando Pace. No, he's clearly the best offensive lineman that was playing football this year, maybe the last several years. Then it's not over. Thursday night, you'll be down in New Orleans for the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Now, what about the rematch there, Todd? It's going to be a good ball game. Florida has to do two things better. They've got to stop Warwick Dunmore and protect that guy, Danny Werfel, a little better than the first time around. So that is the game that will determine, to a large extent, the national championship. The two big ones, the Rose Bowl and the Nokia Sugar Bowl, coming up on ABC and our coverage here of all the festivities of the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl will continue here from Honolulu. Merry Christmas, everybody. Excuse me, think your disposable razor shaves as comfortably as his Gillette Sensor Excel? Yeah, we'll try Sensor Excel. It'll change your mind. After one shave with Sensor Excel, we bet you don't go back.
Because only Sensor Excel has protective micro fins for extra comfort Whoa. and self adjusting blades for extra closeness. Mm. Disposables don't, and Sensor Excel gives more shapes per blade than any disposable. Excuse Take me. Take the Sensor Excel challenge, but you don't go back to disposables. Hey, I want my Sensor Excel back. Hey, hey! The United States Naval Academy offers unique opportunities for academic, athletic, and leadership excellence. Here, young men and women learn to lead and accept responsibility with a comprehensive program that challenges them morally, mentally, and physically. Here, they strive for the highest ideals of integrity and professionalism. Here, they prepare for their future roles as officers and leaders in the Navy and Marine Corps. Midshipmen accept their commitment to the Naval Academy's highest priority, character development, and dedicate themselves to the core values of honor, courage, and commitment. These young men and women are the U.S. Naval Academy. Leadership and vision for the 21st century. You want to play sport at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Get one of these student release forms from your coach or guidance counselor and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in Division I or II. For more information, call toll-free 800-638-3731. Want to play? No to rule. This message provided by the NCAA. ABC Sports brings in 1997 with a Tournament of Roses parade. Then Tennessee tackles Northwestern in the CompUSA Florida Citrus Bowl. Followed by the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Unbeaten Arizona State stakes its claim to the national title when they meet Big Ten champ Ohio State. And January 2nd in primetime, it's a rematch of the year's biggest game. Number one Florida State meets number three Florida with the national championship on the line. It's the Nokia Sugar Bowl. The best bowl action is on ABC Sports. At the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl, Navy coach Charlie Weatherby has to figure out how to stop California's passing attack in the second half. Dean Blevins caught up with him. Okay, here we go. Charlie, I've never seen a team score 28 points and be down a touchdown at half. What do you do to stop them? Well, we've got to slow them down, make them punt a couple of times. You know, they're, they're a potent offense, and defensively, we've got to mix it up a little bit more and make them think we're coming when we're not and then make them think we're not coming and come, and, and we've got to be able to slow them down a little bit and stop them there. Offensively, we can't miss a beat right now. We've got to, we've got to score every opportunity we get. Thanks, Charlie. Thank Good luck. Thank well, the halftime festivities continue here at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Let's sit back and enjoy Santa Claus is coming to town right now. We certainly hope you visited yours already.
the cast of today's halftime show transforms Chief Eagle. We'll continue from the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl in Honolulu, Hawaii. Ray and I set up shop here in the 60s. Man doesn't have a lazy bone in his body. Some time ago, his hands began bothering him. He'd go about his business, but was taking a lot of pills. So our doctor said to try a leave. You know, I could take just two a leave all day. It says so on the label. Was that what you were taking four? With Tylenol, it was six. Just two leaves is all he takes. What could be easier? Ray's in every day except Sunday. Gotta get my fishing in sometime. A leave. All day strong, all day long. Among America's great universities, only one takes 95% of its freshmen from their high school top 10%, offers the most top-ranked graduate programs, and manages to keep tuition under $5,000 a year. Of the 10 best universities in America, only one is a public university. The University of California, Berkeley, keeping the promise of public education. Each year, nearly 30,000 of the best and brightest students come here to learn, and eventually to lead. They come from all over California and the world and represent every economic and cultural background. For this is truly public education, open and belonging to all of us. The University of California, Berkeley, keeping the promise of public education. I think coaching is the only career opportunity in college athletics. Think again. There are many different opportunities and positions within athletics administration. Each year, the NCAA awards enhancement scholarships and internships to help minorities and women pursue graduate degrees and gain valuable practical experience. For more information, contact the NCAA. For more than 30 years, the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics has been the professional and educational association for thousands of individuals at colleges and universities nationwide. The NACTA Sears Directors' Cup honors all sports champions in NCAA Division I, II, III, and NAIA, and the NACTA Foundation has awarded more than $6 million in postgraduate scholarships. The leaders in intercollegiate athletics, we are NACTA, the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics. In New York, Jeff is turning 40. We can show him how to live to be 100. Problems, but more importantly, solutions on ABC's World News Tonight. Don't just watch the news. Use it. Navy coach Charlie Weatherby said 40 points in 40 minutes of effort. Might not be enough, folks, either. Todd, Saturday, the NFL playoffs start right here on ABC. Let's start off with the Buffalo, the old against the new Tom Coughlin and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, new group. Uh, Mark Brunel, a very good quarterback, a young quarterback for Jacksonville, but Buffalo still has that experience. Guys like Jim Kelly and Bruce Smith, and they're playing at home. A very tough place to play. Yeah, and we will start our first game. Our coverage begins at noon Eastern time right here on ABC. And the fellows that have got all the experience, the Buffalo Bills, they bring the great veterans into a game like this, don't they, Todd? Yeah, and when you get into the playoffs, those are the kind of guys that you count on to give your team leadership. And Bruce Smith, Jacksonville will have to find a way to block Bruce Smith if they want to win this game. And it'll be tough going into that environment up there in Buffalo. Great fans. Then the second game, the Dallas Cowboys, Todd, they overcame all kinds of problems, and they're playing Minnesota. They don't have the same strut, but they are still the defending world champions, and defensively, even without Leon Lett, they have really picked it up this year. A tough place also to play down in Dallas. Will the Cowboy defense stand up one more time? Deion Sanders thinks so. But the Minnesota Vikings, they persevered this year, Todd. Yeah, they've hung in there. They've been a real streaky team. They won games in streaks, lost games in streaks, but they're right where they want to be in the playoffs. All right, so that's Saturday here on ABC. Still coming your way here this afternoon. 30 minutes more of action from the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. California and Navy. It's 35-28 and the second half after these messages and a word from your ABC stations. You know, racing for interstate means my battery has enough power to run my car as well as some other race necessities, like this mini fridge. 
track lighting. My foot massager. A window unit. And for those long races, who could forget the espresso maker? <laughs> Heck, I even had a big screen put in for my friends. Interstate batteries. Power fast. Built to last. Hey, Bobby, the burrito's done yet? chest will be the souls of those who came before. You will be an individual, but triumph as a team. You will know strength, courage, and compassion. You will win what must be won, achieve what must be done. Be all that you can be. You will be a soldier. Yeah, it's true. People love the taste of Kellogg's Crispix mix. But does that really make a difference? Look at the time. I've got to get to my aerobics class. Right. <laughs> She's got a headache. Crispix mix has a special recipe. That unique Crispix cereal look. More Crispix mix? And that exceptional taste guests love. So this year, make Kellogg's Crispix mix and party on. Christmas means ABC, and tonight, Wade's decking the halls of his baby's nursery. He's gonna fall asleep staring at that wallpaper his first night on Earth. Oh, you think he's gonna sleep his first night? <laughs> a holiday grace. Then, a snowstorm makes unlikely roomies out of Hayden and Howard. This is the nicest room? Well, in the honeymoon suite, the heart-shaped bed rotates, and there's some video equipment. An all-new coach. Then, Drew's got the holiday blues. Well, a lot of good things have happened to you. Remember that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, with Jimmy Stewart? Yeah. You got to see that. Then, Ellen's entertaining Rudolph. ABC Christmas Tonight. I'm here at Bjorn's to dispel yet another myth about video purchases. Myth number eight, Bjorn's doesn't have a wide selection of big screens, TVs, VCRs, or satellite systems. False! Look at this! An RCA DSS satellite system for just $3.99. Get a Mitsubishi 35-inch TV for $12.99. And this Sony forehead Hi-Fi VCR for a low $2.49. Myth number nine, Bjorn's doesn't have long-term financing. They do, they do, they do. Plug into Bjorn's, Loop 410 across from the airport. Merry Christmas, everybody, from all of us right here at North Star Dodge. Tom Park along with Tim McBee and Joe Bettis. Right now, this Christmas Day, getting ready for the big finale. Merry Folks, Christmas. The biggest and final sale of the year. We're going to stay up around the clock, aren't we, Tim? We Non-stop until midnight New Year's Eve. Now, what we're doing right now, we're in a conversion van, making our way up about 150-some-odd feet above the dealership, where these guys are going to appraise cars throughout this next coming week. That's right, Tom. We're going to appraise cars right down there yep. from up here. So that means I get a really good look at the car. Well, let me ask you something, Joe. How can you tell the value of a car from 150 feet in the air? The best you can, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your trade in for top value. Plus, you're going to find that you have no payments until March of 97. We've lowered the price on everything. We've got, what is it, caravans at 15.9, trucks at 13.9, $2,500 right. off on grand caravans off MSRP. And the list goes on and on. The best used car selections around the clock. Come see us tomorrow, Thursday at North Star Dodge. Wishing you a happy holiday from KSAT 12. We start the second half. It has been an offensive show so far here in Honolulu. California leading Navy 35-28 at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. It'll be Navy's ball with the first possession of the second half. Ryan Longwell, the senior from Bend, Oregon, who does it all. An all-purpose kicker for the Bears will put the ball in the air as California scores in the final 30 seconds of the first half to take the lead. And now it'll be Chris McCoy and the Naval Academy going to work with the first possession. Scott lets it go over to Hunter at the two-yard line. Hunter cuts back on a middle return. Will be short of the 20-yard line. Dean, what went on with the Cal coaching staff at halftime? Well, the guy I wanted to talk to was the defensive coordinator, Tom Homo, and I said, uh, any changes? He says, absolutely changes. He says that uh, we've got to give different looks. He said, we were in one defense almost the entire first half. We're going to give the quarterback different looks. We played the option pretty well, but surprisingly, we stunk against the passing game. So they'll be giving the, the, uh, the quarterback a lot of different looks, Brent. All right, Dean, we'll see how the different looks hold up here and we see that Brian Drexler the center for Navy was injured in the first half returned late 
in the second quarter. Does start the second half. He'll be snapping the ball to Chris McCoy, the junior quarterback from Morris, Georgia. Nelson, the fullback. They run the option. They pitch it to Nelson. Nelson gets a savage block by McGrew. And McGrew could not completely clear the path. And he is down at the 29 with Evan Collins making the stop. Take a look at the numbers in the first half, and the, the number that is the most surprising is the passing yards for Navy right there, 220 yards. They have the edge in total yards, but time of possession, Cal was able to have the football more than Charlie Weatherby wanted him to have in that first half. But the passing yards, and Dean brought up an interesting point with Tom Homo. When you run the option, you force a defense to kind of be restricted in what they do, and then that lets you read the coverage and beat them throwing the football. Using Nelson again to the 36-yard line. So a first down for Navy. Stop made by Deloach. He's a redshirt freshman from Elk Grove, California. Take a look at what Navy did with the football. They've moved it every drive except they're next to the last possession. Three plays and a punt. But two of those plays, they had penalties that really knocked them back early in the drive. Every other time they've had the football, they've been effective. Matt Beck passes the defense along. And there will be three down linemen, two stand-up linebackers. And against that, Nelson runs it to the 44-yard line. It'll be second and short. Chris McCoy has had career days as a runner for Navy, but he's headed for a career day as a passer. Just about perfect. Six of seven for 220 yards, also 34 yards and a couple touchdowns on the ground. And Corey Shem having a real good game. Catching the football has been the big play receiver for the Navy offense. Omar Nelson now with 12 carries and 107 yards. He's a senior from Silver Spring, Maryland. He'll take a break. And Tim Canada, the backup from Trustville, Alabama. McCoy could not option out of that problem as Jeremy Parker from Richmond, California, another freshman, makes the stop. See the number of big plays that we have had in this game. And O'Neill's 100-yard kickoff return is a record for the GB Beagle Aloha Bowl. Third down and three for Navy. Boy slips across to the 46 and appeared to pick it up. Let's talk about the offensive line of Navy here for a moment, Todd, because Scott Zimmerman is listed as 6'3", 246. Now, how does a tackle hold up weighing only 246? He's a former quarterback. He was recruited as a quarterback. He's got to be one of those tough guys. He came in at about a 205-pound quarterback, got put in the weight room, and then has become an offensive tackle. This is a tricky play. Third down and three, they spread him out with formation, and then McCoy runs a quarterback sneak. Usually, you only run a quarterback sneak when you need one yard. That time, they needed three and picked it up with the sneak. Nelson's the fullback. And McCoy looks pass down the middle. Wide open and is complete at the 26-yard line. LeBron Butts, the junior from San Diego. Again, the pass plays, when you run the option, you force the defense to be pretty vanilla and, and show you what they're going to play. Then you, you isolate them into the same kind of coverages, and you come up with big plays. You say, well, if Chris McCoy wouldn't have underthrown this, it would have been a touchdown. That's true, but he had to get up into the pocket. He was under pressure when he threw the football. Andy Jacobs put the pressure on, forced McCoy to underthrow that pass, or it would have been a touchdown for Navy. David Lark, far out to the left. Three wide formation. And the fullback, Nelson, runs strongly before he is pushed out of bounds <laughs> at the 20 yard line. This is unbelievable. I, these teams just move up and down the field. And You're right, defensive coordinator would have been the worst job to have. You know, you, that, that old saying of asking a defensive coordinator a night before a game like this, how'd you sleep? Slept like a baby. I woke up every 20 minutes crying my eyes out. Oh, it's something. <laughs> Second down and three. You see the mark. That's a good one to Roger Staback. He pitches now to Nelson. Nelson cuts away from the first defender, but he is still short. And the ball is down as he juggled it. California was able to pick it up. So the, let's hold on. They're pointing in that direction. There's the turnover. 
And it was Andre Rhodes making another huge defensive play for Cal being congratulated on that far side. This has been one of the real strengths of Navy is their ability to protect the football and create turnovers. A plus 12 turnover ratio coming in. But watch at the end of this play. It's well defended by Cal. And as he's on the ground, a good call. That ball did squirt out before his body made contact with the ground. And a heads-up play by Andre Rhodes. Good call by the officiating crew. That is the first turnover in this game. Game with 11.30 left in the third quarter. On first down, and it's O'Neal running strongly for almost 10 yards on first down. O'Neal with two touchdowns. Bobby Shaw with a pair of touchdowns. And California with a 35-28 lead in the ball back. Talk about how effective Navy was offensively when they had the football. Cal just as effective. Four touchdowns out of their six possessions. And that last touchdown really hurt Navy because it was just too easy, Brent. I mean, four plays. They did it in 30 seconds. They got the lead going into halftime and uh, and really put the pressure back on Navy right away. Todd, I know we want to pass along a very Merry Christmas to our families back on the mainland. And a very special Merry Christmas to your father who's getting ready as an assistant coach with Indianapolis to go up into Pittsburgh. Yeah, I appreciate that. He had to, uh, had to work all day today on Christmas, but they're getting ready to go in to play the Steelers again. He's offensive line coach for the Indianapolis Colts. And we wish them all the best this weekend. Second down now. Less than a yard here for Cal. Brandon Willis. They go empty in the backfield. So two tight ends and three wide outs. The offensive line holds up. They're going to throw to Gonzalez on a tight end screen. And Gonzalez may be just right at the first down marker. That play did not break wide open as Cal expected. Well, this is really well defended by Navy because it's kind of a trick play, a throwback screen to the tight end, second and one, you're thinking run. They thought, Cal thought they would get a big play out of that, but very well defended by Travis Cooley and Clint Bruce coming over there to finish off the play. Good disciplined defense on the backside by Travis Cooley. And with the half yard, it's a fresh set of downs. Gonzalez, the tight end over on the left side. And Willis was spun down that time by the aggressive Navy defenders, led by Chad Olzaffel out of Coleyville, Texas, a senior. That's the kind of play that Navy's defense really needs right now. They have not been able to force many negative plays on this Cal offense. That's a chance where they get some penetration into the backfield, and they knock them back a couple yards, put them into a second and long situation. California leads Navy 35-28. Second and a dozen, Barnes throws to Shaw. Shaw. The first down for California at the 46-yard line of Cal's. Really a good read by Pat Barnes. You know, a lot of times you can fool a quarterback if you blitz to his backside, but the blitz is going to come right here. It's right into the face of Barnes, so he sees the blitz coming the whole way. As soon as he reads the blitz, he knows he's got to get rid of the football. It's out quickly and an easy completion for Pat Barnes. If you blitz to the backside of the quarterback, you can sometimes fool him. When you blitz right into their face, they usually read it. They'll run Willis behind the fullback. And that was number 51, Clint Bruce, the linebacker. In his last game for Navy, coming up to make the tackle. He has led them in tackles today. Be second down and 11 coming up for the Bears. And we have an official's timeout. Take a look at Steve Mariucci. You know, it's, it's hard to imagine that this year, or this time last year, he was still coaching the regular season with the Packers. He didn't even have his staff put together. Now, a year later, not only do they have the staff, they had a good turnaround here at 6-5. and five. He's already got 15 verbal commitments by recruits. So what a difference a year makes for Steve Mariucci. Second down and 11 against the Blitz Gonzalez at midfield. This will be about third and six coming up for the Bears. 
I think this is the big play for the Navy defense to stop him here on third down. We heard Charlie Weatherby going in at halftime saying he thought that his offense was going to have to score every time they had a chance to do it. They had a nice drive, but the turnover killed their last opportunity to score. They need to get the ball back here and not let Cal extend their lead any more than seven points. Slot formation to the right. Niall Benjamin on the far outside. Lawrence looking for someone. Gonzalez breaks free, throws to the other bubbles it. It'll be fourth down and six. That's two passes today that we've seen Bobby Shaw, the leading receiver in the Pac-10, drop when he had his hands on it. And I think both cases were situations where he was just thinking about running before he secured the catch. And it's just a, a problem that all receivers have. you got to do first things first. Pat Barnes is going to do a nice job getting away from the pressure again, showing his elusiveness. And this is a catch that has to be made. It's right in the hands of Shaw. Fourth down and six, and Cal decides to go for it. Douglas is the motion receiver, just trying to draw him off sides. I guess I have a question for you as timeout is called. Why would you pull him off on fourth and six? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I just ask him. So we've got a timeout. 35-28, Cal leading. this thing's been going we've been chasing yeah. it okay, it's good. an obsession with us check we, we've gone days without seeing anything yeah, toying with us again and there it is right there you can see its ears and its drum come on bunny come on baby you, look 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 at that look at about 10 o'clock stop, stop, stop. No, it's a woodchuck nothing right it's a woodchuck forget it sorry it just keeps going and going and therefore you yourself have to keep going and going we're your children. Your boys. Your girls. Your sons and daughters. We are old for our age. We are too fat. Can't do a pull-up. We smoke. We inhale. We drink. We are mothers. We are fathers. We are old for our age. We have no place to play. We have no place to play! We want to be strong. We want you to come out and play. Teach us to hit. Teach us to throw. We are your children! We are you. We are you. We are you. The Minnesota Vikings tackle the defending Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys. It's game two of an NFL wildcard doubleheader Saturday on ABC Sports. At the GP Eagle Aloha Bowl, we have now gone two series without a touchdown. Hard to believe as Scott waits deep now. Remember, he had trouble with the sun looking up into it. Long well punting for Cal. Outstanding punter. They'll try to push the Navy back as far as they can with this punt. The fullback Vera, the up back for Cal. Scott Simmons there catch and makes the catch and then he's hit by number five Bullard there at the end but there's no flag after he made the catch at 12 and Scott says are you kidding me? He's asking the referee, I mean, the guy wrapped me up. you got to throw the flag in that situation. And no question. He may not have meant to, and it, and it may not have been a hard hit. I think they're saying that he moved into the guy. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty good no call. No harm, no foul on him. Uh, what do you think? We're in the NBA this afternoon, Mr. Blackledge? <laughs> the ball is at the 12-yard line. Here comes Chris McCoy. And the Navy attack. Really it again. 35-28. McCoy, split left, cuts back from his own end zone. Now he'll keep it. 25 down 
30-yard line. First down, Navy. He ran 30 yards. He'd take it all the way back to the California end zone. They're trying to throw the ball back again, trying to kind of fool the Cal defense, get him flowing one way and throw back. Watch as he rolls to his left. Now, he wants to set his feet and throw back to the other side, but there's good pressure right in there by Jerry Deloach, and McCoy makes the good decision. Don't force a bad throw. Run the football. I've been running the ball well all season. Let me make a big play as a runner and get us out of this hole. Blasconis and Heaven are the wide receivers. Boy cuts back against the grain for four more yards. Second and six coming up. The hit by Hibbler. Cal's doing a little bit better job squeezing the option right now. I mean, they were getting spread out there in that first half. The fullback was making some big plays. McCoy was having a little more time to make his decision down the line. I think Cal's doing a little bit better job squeezing the play a little bit and forcing quicker decisions by Chris McCoy. Ross Scott replaces Corey Shim. Lasconis lined up to the right. That spread out option look. And the whistle before the snap. Took too much time. Chris McCoy has done a lot of audibling at the line of scrimmage, trying to get in the best possible play. That time it kind of came back to hard. the snap. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Down remains second. See, you really hate negative plays in this offense. You know, if you're in Cal's offense and you get a negative play, you're built around the passing game. It's a little bit easier to make up that lost yardage. But when you're an option team and you get in second 11, second and 12, second and 15, it really puts you behind the eight ball a little bit more. Second and 11. Canada the fullback. McCoy. Down for Navy at the 44 yard line. One thing about the Naval Academy wide receivers, they are big targets. Yep. They go 6'3, 6'4, 6'5. Excellent pass protection that time up front by the Navy offensive line. Allowed Chris McCoy, who's not a very tall quarterback at 5'10, but it allowed him to set his feet, stand there in the pocket, and deliver the good throw downfield. And that was an excellent throw by Chris McCoy. 7.20 remaining in the third. Navy with a fresh set of downs on its own 44-yard line. Down at the 40-yard line and into the arms of Andy Jacobs, number 40. Remember a minute ago, I made the point about Pat Barnes. If you blitz away from him, you have a chance to create a big play on defense. Andy Jacobs came to the backside of Chris McCoy. McCoy had no sense that he was there, and therefore you get the big play by the Cal defense. If that pressure comes right into the face of the quarterback, he has a chance to read it and make the adjustment. Now Bryant, who's a heck of a passer, checks in as the right wing back here on second and 14. They have used a throwback to McCoy. They're going to run, however, for a couple of yards to the 42-yard line, and this will put Navy in third and long again. This is an offense that, that isn't geared to play catch-up football necessarily, and it isn't geared to, to bite off big chunks of yardage on third and long. It's, it's an offense that's geared to keep a defense off balance and dictate the down and distance situation by the way they play. Corey Shim, number 20, lines up in a stand-up tight end position on the right side of the Navy formation. Corey slips away from Jacobs in a foot race. He loses it. Midfield that is short of the first down. That is fourth and four. Good series by Andy Jacobs. He was a real presence in the backfield. That whole series for the Cal defense really created some havoc back there for Chris McCoy. Here he goes again. McCoy try, trying to go play action fake. And airs Andy Jacobs right in the backfield. McCoy never had a chance to even look downfield, let alone throw the ball. Does the only thing he could do, try to turn it into a positive game as a runner. McCoy trots back on the field 
So now we have California attempting to draw Navy offside. Let's see what McCoy does here. We're down to five seconds on the play clock. They're going to run the fourth down gamble pass. Caught first down. One-handed grab wow. by Corey Shem. Saves the day for the midshipmen. Play clock is down to one. Chris McCoy puts it the only place he can, throwing it off his back foot, and a great catch by Corey Shem, and a great conversion on fourth down. Take a look at Shem. He's the slot receiver, the, the second receiver from the outside. It's a quick throw, just need one yard, one-handed grab. He knows he's going to get hit by the free safety. Boy, what a gutsy catch. He knows he's going to get hit, brings it in with one hand, and then protects the football to secure the catch. Navy shows slot formation to the right. McCoy looks intercepted. He threw it right into the hands of number 59, Matt Beck, the redshirt freshman from Grass Valley, California. This is the only bad pass that Chris McCoy has thrown today, and, and he really kind of pulled the string on it. It looked like there was a miscommunication because the receiver was running down through the middle of the field. He looked like he was expecting the receiver to cross. Take a look from behind the defense now. McCoy's going to throw it short like it was a crossing route. You see the receiver running down through the post. Very ill-advised throw that time by Chris McCoy. So two series now. Navy has the ball. They move it well. They get down in scoring area and turn it over. Two consecutive possessions. Both offenses obviously exhausted. It's a defensive battle. There's that man again, Clint Bruce, who's still another stop for Navy. The track meet apparently is over. We're inside of five minutes here in the third quarter, and we haven't scored a touchdown here in the second half of the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl. That's a record on this day. Matt Barnes faces a second and 10. Ball on the Bears, 26-yard line. Caught by Niall Benjamin at the 37-yard line. Navy complaining that he was going to be out of bounds and that he was not carried out. It was not a legal catch, but the uh, official prevails. And so Barnes with another first down for Cal. Watch, you only need one foot down in college football. Benjamin knows where he's at on the sideline, does a nice job getting the one foot in, and the referee's in perfect position to make the call. Good play, good officiated call. In the round, it's Benjamin. The quarterback's out in front of him. Throwing a block was Barnes, and that enabled Benjamin to gain another five yards. What a block by Pat Barnes. Brent, you asked Steve Mariucci yesterday about his penchant for trick plays. Well, this is the first one we've seen. It's the reverse. You take advantage of an aggressive defense that Navy has. There's Pat Barnes out leading the reverse. He's a big kid, 6'4", 220 pounds. Gets just enough of the defender to allow Benjamin about an extra 8 to 10 yards on the play. I wonder if Brett Favre ever did that. O'Neill is hit by him scrimmage and that was Nate Johnston the senior from Pineville Louisiana delivering the blow number 93 one of the things that Navy has done very well defensively this year is forced turnovers in their eight wins 26 but in their three losses they've only forced two they've not been able to get Cal to turn the ball over yet today second and 13 incomplete it'll be third and 13 Coaches are very similar, Mariucci and Weatherby, both 41 years old, both have a lot of energy and enthusiasm, a lot of charisma, and you can see both teams, the, the, these young men really like playing for these two coaches, really, uh, really are inspired by the leadership of their head coaches. Barnes, high, great grab by Benjamin. 
Benjamin going away. Juggled it once, then caught it right at the first down marker. I mean, right on the spot. And they re-spot it, and that is not a first down. It's going to be fourth and short. They move it back about a half yard. Nice job by Benjamin, really extending himself for the catch and then keeping his concentration with somebody tackling him from behind, still is able to focus in on the football and pull it in for the reception. Arthur, the fullback, quickly ties his shoelace, then gets the call. And he bangs hard for the first down of the 15. So whenever you folks see Mark Vero, who's only a junior in the Pac-10, tie his shoelace next year, he's coming at you. Nice job, use of the quick count by Cal. They lined up on the fourth and one. They didn't waste any time, just got up and ran the play. Nice job by Yager Williams, number 56. He's going to pull out. Gonzalez gets a block. Yager Williams pulls and gets a nice lead block on Travis Cooley and an easy first down. Here's O'Neal. Stopped at the 13. Bruce again. Now that's a linebacker's number, isn't it? 51. That's his hero, was Dick Buckus. That's, the, that's who he's tried to, to pattern his style of play after. And, he certainly plays with a similar kind of intensity and passion for the game. Inside of two minutes remaining in the third, a scoreless third quarter here at the GP Villa Loja Bowl. And California threatening inside the 15-yard line. Looks for Gonzalez. And broken up beautifully by Jeremy Alota from San Diego. See the difference. This was the same play that they hit Gonzalez or Bullard with earlier, but this time the matchup was not against the linebacker. It was against a safety, Jervy Alota, and Pat Barnes thought he had an easy touchdown. He kind of threw this up a little bit casually, thinking it was an easy touchdown. It was underthrown, and Alota does a nice job. There's Alota, number six. He's man-to-man -man coverage. Now, the ball's up in the air a long time. It's a little wobbly, and that allows the safety to get underneath and make the play. Had that been a linebacker, probably was a touchdown for Cal. Against the safety, a little bit more speed out there. So here's the third down. Douglas dashes in motion to the wide side. Barnes in trouble and going down. Kevin Lewis, the strong safety, came on the blitz and took it to the Cal quarterback. Field goal time for the Bears. Great call by Dick Bumpus. He guessed right that time, bringing the blitz from the backside. Again, it was away from the quarterback's eyes. Watch Barnes. He's looking to his right. He wants to throw to his right. He thinks he can turn and go the other way. Never saw the blitz coming. A good call that time, bringing Kevin Lewis to the backside of the quarterback for the big sack. Longwell, the kicker. Steve Gottlieb, the senior backup quarterback from Beverly Hills, is the holder. It's a 41-yard attempt. Hooking, hooking, but good. So Longwell with our first points of the second half. It's 35-28 and add the field goal. We'll be right back. The golden age of small business has arrived, and with it, the Gold Corporate Optima Card, new from American Express. It allows you to extend payments to manage your cash flow with a low introductory APR of 8.9% and a credit line of up to $20,000, all with no annual fee. It's the perfect match for today's small businesses. The Gold Corporate Optima Card, for the golden road to your success. Men, is gray hair sneaking up on you, right under your nose, making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just For Men gel, made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel, and in five minutes, rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just For Men gel, the sure thing for a natural look. Music like you've never heard it before.
Infinity Sound Systems, an instrumental part of driving. Everyone has problems. We focus on solutions on ABC's World News Tonight. Don't just watch the news. Use it. ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl brought to you by Jeep, makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. Energizer still going, long-lasting Energizer batteries keep going and going and going. California with a field goal and a 38-28 10-point lead over Navy, kicking it off. Right back to Honolulu and the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. The warmest aloha from the Sheraton hotels that call Waikiki Beach home. The Sheraton Waikiki. The Royal Hawaii. The Sheraton Moana Surfrider. The Sheraton Princess Kaiulani. Let Sheridan turn the world's most famous beach into your own tropical paradise. Come celebrate Aloha with Sheridan. For reservations, call 1-800-STAY-ITT. find the fishing hole. <laughs> the all-new Jeep Wrangler. It's even more fun than you imagined. This game featured one of the most moving moments of the entire bowl season. This is the scene last week at Pearl Harbor. You can only imagine the thoughts on the midshipmen's minds when they went out there to see the memorial at Arizona and the tribute to our men and women who lost their lives on that day. This is part of their history at Annapolis and they laid a wreath at the foot of the shrine honoring those who died. And some of the Navy personnel who are stationed here in the stands. They certainly have enjoyed having Navy here for a bowl game. It's been a wonderful experience for the entire team and also for California. Now it is first down. McCoy in trouble again. And suddenly, Todd, I've got to ask you, this game has turned 180 completely around. The defenses now are doing the job. We've had forced turnovers. We've had better tackling. That one by Evan Collins. What in the world did they do here at halftime? Well, they, they obviously have made an adjustment to be a little more aggressive. I think that's what Cal has done. They're squeezing the plays down on the option a little more. But you mentioned the turnovers. That has been the big neutralizer here in the ball game for Navy so far. The last two times they had the ball, they drove down to the 19 and they fumbled. Then they drove to the 35 and threw an interception. It's critical that they get some points in this offensive series. Final seconds of the third. McCoy complete to McGrew. And it's third down. Those are the passes they were completing in the yeah. first half. And Chris McCoy, the last couple times he's thrown the football, has, has not gotten his feet set quite as well. That's a tough throw to make. It's a crossing route. The receiver's running away from you, and his feet were not in good position to make the throw. A reminder, the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And remember, it is Thursday night on January 2nd, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Florida State and Florida. Third 
down and 12. McCoy in trouble. Incomplete. And it is fourth down. See, Cal is what they've done now is they've been able to create some plays on first down where they create some negative yardage plays, and then when they get maybe into passing situations that they're not accustomed to, now they're bringing some pressure. They're bringing some blitzes from the outside. That time, Chris McCoy just had to unload the football. First down is really a critical down for an option running football team like Navy is. Rubius, hunting. Wide receiver Benjamin on the 22. Penalty flag. Tackled at the 37, but a couple of penalty flags came flying on the punt return. Yeah, that was Rashid Hibbler, number 51, got caught for an illegal block in the back. Unfortunately for him, it happened directly in front of the official down there watching the play. Hard to avoid making the call on that one. Looks like they're coming back as the quarter comes to an end. That's what has happened here. That's why they're just changing sides. An illegal sides. block in the back during the return. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So the third quarter comes to an end, and California builds a seven point lead to ten. With 15 minutes to go, we'll be back. After these message and a word from your local station. In the beginning was the ordinary battery. Then came the long-lasting Duracell battery. And now, the next leap forward, introducing Duracell Power Check. The battery with a fuel gauge so you can check its power. Anytime, anywhere. New Duracell Power Check. No battery is more advanced. A lot of people my age set off on cruises around the world. Now I set off on a second career. Hi, guys. Of course, my Dean Witter Broker's impeccable investment advice prepared me for any sort of retirement I chose. And I chose to start over with a business of my own. Wait a minute. Are you sure you're old enough to be here? <laughs> That's my idea. At Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Hi, I'm Bill Maher, and if you tune into Politically Incorrect, you'll hear divergent voices humorously arguing about the big issues of the day. If you already hear those voices, please consult a physician. One of our jobs is insuring Major League Baseball teams and the airlines they fly on. We also insure the stadiums they play in and the hot dogs they sell. We ensure the satellite broadcasting the game. We even ensure the gloves, the bats, the balls, and fortunately, the cars in the lot. AIG, world leaders in insurance and financial services. To see if you can save money on your auto insurance, call AIG at 1-800-848-0001. 3.9% financing. Chevy's 96-year-end clearance is on. And to make it easy to buy a new Cavalier or Lumina, Chevrolet has just authorized 3.9% financing on hot new Cavalier coupes, sedans, and convertibles. And 3.9% financing on Lumina, the worry-free family car. Make your money count during the year-end clearance going on now at your Texas Chevy Geo dealers. So, you think they got the message? Oh, yeah. Well, just to make sure. There, that ought to do it. Well, we will start the final 15 minutes and a handful of seconds. The officials now deciding that the way the penalty was accepted means that there should be a snap left in the third quarter. So don't, don't adjust your sets and we're not showing you a reverse angle here. 
This is how they're going to close it out. Barnes rolls. It's Gonzalez on the tight end. Out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And now they should be switching ends. Well, Dean, it's been a very active week for the uh, California coaching staff. They should be in good shape, huh? <laughs> yeah, they really should. There you see Steve Mariucci, Brent, with four fingers up. Of course, the old four-finger trick, meaning, hey, we're in, we're in great shape. There he is at practice. That's him, right, with a yellow shirt on. At the end of practice, they have typically have these drills that he jumps in the middle of this one. It was a rainy day on Monday at practice. Watch Mariucci here. Barnes says, on your belly, on your feet. On your belly, on your feet. Unbelievable. And Pat Barnes, the quarterback, told me that this really typifies how he relates to his players. A very popular head coach. Normally see him in that blue blazer. You know, Dean, they do that fourth quarter thing. They started it when he first took over the job. It, it included 6 a.m. workouts in the offseason, building team camaraderie and conditioning. And their feeling was they wanted to feel like they were the best conditioned team in the fourth quarter of anybody they played. That's usually true, but Brent, against a team like Navy, I don't think they're going to be in better condition than these guys from Navy when it comes to the fourth quarter. I have a question about that scene we just looked at. Isn't that what you probably did with Joe Paterno on all oh, yeah. the bowl trips? Yeah, we used to do that on yeah, the bowl I trips. Guess, huh? <laughs> Joe popping down in the mud and the whole thing, right? There may have been a few guys that may have wanted to throw him in the mud. I don't know about, about if we got him in the drills. Joey's only kid. Second down and a four. Willis. Uh, check that. That was Delta O'Neill, the young man who scored a couple touchdowns. And Kevin Lewis with the hit. And we're underway in the final 15 minutes. In the numbers, both teams, they, they came in averaging over 400 yards a game. Navy with 478, and again, the 277, the big number passing, but the two turnovers really has been the difference in this ballgame. This is an even football game, but those turnovers have given the lead to California. And it is a 10-point lead right now with third down and three. Blasting for the first down for Cal. Fresh set of downs. Well, a reminder, coming up tonight on ABC, Grace Under Fire, Coach, The Drew Carey Show, Ellen, and then Primetime Live. Start at 8 Eastern Time here on the network. First down, Barnes in California, lead Navy by 10. Off a play fake. Now he breaks a tackle. Sprints right. Gonzalez incomplete. That's a heck of a play by Pat Barnes. And you see the strength, the upper body strength of Pat Barnes on a play like that. I mean, he set a record for quarterbacks at Cal with a bench press of 335 pounds. And you don't do this if you don't have a strong upper body. Watch him just shake off the tackle of a bigger man. He's able to hold his feet, shake it off, keep his eyes downfield. Even though he doesn't get the completion, that's a positive play for the Cal offense by their quarterback. You see that Victoria Glenn is out at left tackle. Go to that spot anyhow. And O'Neill to the 41-yard line. Down and two for Cal. Sean Bullard and Gonzalez give Cal a pair of tight ends. Benjamin out of bounds at the 45-yard line, but that's enough for a first down for the Bears. The key to this offense is being balanced, being able to run and pass the football. And we mentioned earlier in the year, in their six wins, they averaged 194 yards rushing, 
They protected the quarterback. They only fumbled three times. In the five losses, those running numbers went way down. It forced them to have to throw all the time. Then they had problems. You can see today, 365 yards total offense, 95 yards rushing. So they're still under their average in those first six games, but they are having more success running the ball than they did in those five losses during the season. Brian Shields has replaced Lynn at left tackle, number 65. O'Neill near midfield. This is different for the Navy defense because of the way Navy plays offense and the way they normally possess the football. This defense is usually not used to being on the field a very uh, large amount of time, but today Cal is really doing a good job possessing the football as well, mixing in the run and the pass. This is probably the longest that the Navy defense has had to spend on the field in the last several weeks of the season. And we get word from the sideline that Glenn is just a little tired being given right at the first down marker makes the catch against safety Kevin Lewis that time Mariucci and his staff bringing time down off the clock here in the fourth quarter they enjoy a 10-point lead right now Steve Mariucci told us that one of his recruiting visits was to Tony Gonzalez's house to speak with him and his parents about whether or not he should go out into the draft this year as a junior or stay another year at Cal. They talked about, they took every 30 team in the NFL, they looked at who their tight end was right now, who they had drafted at that position in the last couple years, and trying to figure out, is this the best time for a tight end to come out into the draft, or would it be better to wait for another year, play another year here at Cal, get all the accolades that he could get as a as another player, as a senior player at the University of California. Obviously, Steve Mariucci wants him to come back, but he wants him to do what's best for him. Well, there's a reminder that on New Year's Day, 11 Eastern, the Tournament of Roses Parade starts off the big day, and then the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl from Orlando, Tennessee Northwestern, the Rose Bowl from Pasadena, Arizona State, Ohio State. New Year's Day, spend it on ABC. Ohio State also going through some changes in their coaching staff going into that game. Joe Hollis taking the job at Arkansas State. Walt Harris, the quarterback coach, now the head man at Pitt. O'Neill tackled behind the line by Navy as Clint Bruce, who has played very well defensively. So Barnes during that last timeout, delivering the water to his teammates. That's the more you can do theory right there. That's right. He will <laughs> probably be doing a lot of that in the NFL next year early in his career, I would think. Because he'll get a look. He's big. The arm is strong enough. Played in a California style offensive system. Learned under Mariucci. He's been very good with quarterbacks. Short drop Barnes fired that time incomplete it'll be third down. Todd as a former quarterback I know you have a special look at Barnes right now what what is your feeling about his future professionally well I think he has a good future I you know I don't know that he's a, a franchise kind of quarterback going into the league after this season but I think this year under Steve Mariucci has been a great benefit to him I think he learned about the nuances of playing the position and he was very efficient and I think if you're an efficient quarterback at the next level you throw touchdowns and completions and not interceptions you're gonna have a time to play uh, when your time comes around so I think he has a good future in the NFL Third and 12, Sharad far to the left. Looks in that direction, going long. Who is ace receiver? Bobble incomplete. He had touched it in the defensive back. Number 21, Robert Green, did the smart thing after the juggle. Charlie Weatherby told us he thought this tandem of corners that he has, Robert Green and Sean Andrews, are the best that he's ever been around. You can see Shaw has a step on Green, but Green is just watching the eyes. He's waiting for the ball to get there and does a nice job getting his right hand in there and fighting through the end of the play. That's good work by the cover guy, Robert Green. The all-conference punter and second team field goal specialist. What a record for Longwell, who suffered mightily his first year as a kicker under pressure. Gets that one off, and it'll bound on into the end zone, so it'll come out on the 20-yard line. When you come back, it will be a very important offensive series for the Naval Academy. They trail it by 10. 
Testing the new Eagle Talon TSI today is Sharon, a professional driving instructor. Ready? Let's go. Talon's all-wheel drive's great for this maneuver. Oh. Makes you real popular with road crews, too. Lots of power from the 16-valve turbo, 210 horses. Wouldn't you like to try some parallel parking? Sure. Nice technique. Hey. Right. Really. Test drive the Eagle Talon at your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. U.S. gold medalist Mia Hamm spends 90 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back with Pert Plus. More than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioner stays suspended. As you rinse, the conditioners go to work, giving you great hair simply. Perfect for Mia, because she wants great hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it. Wouldn't you? Pert Plus. Simply great hair. Simply. See Sunday, it's Al Pacino and his Oscar-winning role. You ride with one very happy man. And Chris O'Donnell. Cool. Scent of a Woman, 8, 7 Central, ABC Sunday. So for Navy, a quarterback change, a spark plug, a senior, a co-captain from Fort Worth, Texas. It's number eight, Ben Fay, known as the passing specialist, although McCoy threw the ball very well in the first half, trailing by 10, fires complete on first down, and that's the spark he gives the team as he hit number 15, Howard Bryant, one of the wingbacks. And you saw his numbers. The thing that you can't measure or quantify is his leadership. And I mean, he is a great leader, not only on the field, but off the field. As you take a look at Chris McCoy, one of the biggest supporters of this kind of a move, and Ben Fay. They're good friends. They, they work well together. So three wide receivers are lined up far to the left-hand side, down toward the bottom, and they bring McGrew now in motion back toward the formation. Faye looks in that direction, going to go long, heaven, jump ball, and it is knocked incomplete by Lennon, who was injured. Remember the report from Dean Blevins? Number seven, you are not injured. You will not sit down. You will play through it. And that time, number seven did just that. Well, this is an odd-looking formation. Three receivers stacked together. They bring this one in motion and just going to try to slip a guy out, try to create some confusion and maybe get a big play. But Cal, pretty well disciplined on this. They don't give up the easy play. Lonnen right there on the coverage downfield knocks the ball away. Same formation. And McGrew back in motion again. They look now for the slant man. Hanging on is heaven. Right at the 45-yard line. First down for Ben Fay and Navy. These wide receivers are tough. They may not be the most skilled wide receiver, may not be as skilled as the guys on the other side of the field, but they catch the football and absorb punishment. I mean, they don't get many balls thrown to them. They're going to make sure they don't drop them when they do get a chance. 10-5. Here's a throw up. There's a screen off of that look, and it is Scott to midfield. So they had planned to use this formation left and right with Ben Fay, and they unveil it here. And uh, upstairs, I imagine all the Cal defensive assistants now are talking about exactly how many men they want to deploy, because if they put too many men over there, he simply throws it back the other way. And they're going to set something else up with that, because that one was a lateral. He ended up running it, but if he throws a lateral again, he also has the ability to throw it somewhere else on the field. And they have a good thrower, Brian, over here as the deep man, as the whistle is sounded and a timeout is going to be called by California so there was some confusion on the part of the defense but they did have their thrower in there number 15 we'll continue it has arrived the day when you stop listening to the tales of other lives lived and begin the odyssey that will be your story When you find the destiny to which you were born, 
All you need to bring with you is your honor, your courage, and your commitment. It's your journey. Make it a good one. Call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Let the journey begin. Wait for a cold pill to start working when there's Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Its burst of effervescence means its strong medicine is ready to rush relief the instant you take it. So what are you waiting for? Get fast relief. Get Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Also rush soothing relief with Alka-Seltzer Plus hot flu and body ache formula. Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited is more sophisticated, more refined, and more luxurious than ever. You can be sure that underneath it all, it's still a Jeep. ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl brought to you by Jeep, makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee and Wrangler, Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most, Sheraton Hotels and Waikiki in celebration of Aloha, Interstate Batteries, Power Fast, built to last, second down for Navy, Ben Fay now in at quarterback, and that special formation with three wideouts stacked. And then they bring Shem in motion this time, and he'll go back like a running back, and they run the fullback Canada for the first down, breaks free. Oh, a shoestring tackle at the 36-yard line by Deloach. You know, this is really a good adjustment by Paul Johnson because the last couple series, Cal had been able to kind of squeeze the option a little bit. They were kind of getting more people around the football. Now by formation, Navy is forcing Cal to put more defenders out, spread the defense out because they have to go out and account for all of these wide receivers. It's opening up some more lanes on the inside. Here is Shem coming back around. Toss to him coming off the formation. That look was there. Another first down. And the formation is working, at least for the time being, as Navy runs it to Cal's 22-yard line here. Nine minutes to go. Navy down by 10 points. You know, another thing about Ben Fay, I would venture to say that being a co-captain on the Navy team is a little bit more, has more meaning than being a co-captain on any other college football team because, you know, these guys, all the Navy players are kind of groomed for leadership and to be selected as the co-captain is a great honor and that's why a guy like Ben Fay can come off the bench and have immediate respect from everybody on the field. Here is the blocking back, Smith in motion this time. Canada ahead to the 22-yard line. So they use a variety of different slot backs over here as the middleman in this formation. And so far, they have seemed content to bring someone in motion. For example, we see McGrew coming over this time. And the other thing they're doing, they're going without a huddle. They're forcing Cal to keep the same defensive people on the field. They're not letting them substitute to a more pass-oriented defense. Well, the defender jumped into the neutral zone, and then the offensive lineman, Jeff Smith, jumped after him. As long as the defensive man didn't make contact, the penalty will go against Navy. If he made contact when he entered the neutral zone, then it would go against California. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yards penalty. Down, remains second. No way! Guys, it's neutral, though. Well, there's a reminder that the thrifty car rental bowl week on ESPN is Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern from Atlanta, the Peach Bowl, Clemson, and LSU. So with the penalty, it is second down and 13. And McGrew comes in motion. Straight through the formation. Slant. And no penalty flag thrown. 
See, Ben Faye's got to just set his feet and make a good solid throw on this. He, he had enough protection to go ahead and set his feet and make the good through, throw. He threw it as he was backing up a little bit, never really got his feet up under him. And he kind of pulled the string on the throw. That's a, that's a good play call, but he's got to come up with a better throw than that. Take a look now as Faye goes back. He's never really going to get completely set. He's kind of drifting back as he makes the throw, and it's hard to throw accurately when you don't have your feet up underneath you. Receiving specialist Shim back toward the line. He'll go out as a receiver. They'll drop to the fullback coming out of the backfield. A great call by Navy. Out of bounds inside the five-yard line. And it was Tim Canada from Trustville, Alabama, the junior, making the big play as they throw to the fullback at the right time. Excellent call. Now Canada is lined up right behind the quarterback. They're just going to slip him out. It's a little bit of a pick play, and the defender, Gelderman, is actually knocked off stride by his own man, Stefano, and that enables Canada to get to the sideline and take it down inside the five-yard line. Good play call and good execution by Navy. So on third and 13, a 25-yard gain. First and goal for Fay. He keeps it on the option. He battles. Touchdown, Navy. Gives the Naval Academy a lift. Coach Johnson's Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl special formation works. <laughs> that looked like the old Mississippi Valley State formation when Jerry Rice used to play down there. They used to line up in a formation like that. Vanderhorst. And it's a three-point. California lead is Faye and Navy go 80 yards in 10 plays, and there's a very happy goat in Honolulu. Merry Christmas, everybody. Trust the critics. My Fellow Americans... You think that was the tires? ...is one of this year's best comedies. I think you're awesome. Endless fun. Come on, I can't! A comedy masterwork. That felt good. Tremendously hilarious. Oh, my God, he squeezed my breast again. Hollywood star-studded holiday comedy hit. Any questions? Not for me. My Fellow Americans... Let's stop talking. We're about to bond. That'll make me bomb. Rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. Give me a large fry super size. I got it. I got it. It's time to pick the 97 NBA All-Star team. Anything the kid wants to well, you can vote for your favorite players. I love the haircut. Where they serve America's favorite fries. McDonald's. Yeah, vote today. It's your world, baby. You know, racing for interstate means my battery has enough power to run my car as well as some other race necessities, like this mini fridge, my foot massager. Heck, I even had a big screen put in for my friends. Hey, Jimmy, how's the leg? Leg's just fine. <laughs> Doesn't look too good. No pain at all. The way you banged it up the other day? No problem. The doctor gave me Tylenol. Extra strength. Tylenol? Is that kind of pain? Just watch me, son. For the pain of traumatic injuries, Tylenol is recommended the most by doctors. Hey, Brad. How's my leg? Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody, and a special very Merry Christmas to Harrison Blackledge. Daddy's coming home <laughs> soon, just as soon as I let him go here from That's the right. Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl. And also to Blake and Scott Musburger. I'm sure you're looking forward to seeing your boys again, too. They're probably out fishing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's a wonderful moment here, and you know there are a lot of people this time of year who are hospitalized. We want to send along a very special holiday greeting to all of them, especially the father of one of our fine PAs, Laura Heinemann, who traveled over here to Honolulu to watch this game, Dick Heinemann, and he came down with a little bit of a heart problem. He's been hospitalized, receiving excellent medical attention here in Hawaii, and if Dick is watching, we want to send along the merriest of Christmas greetings to him, and we know that things are going to be just fine. The kickoff now by the Naval Academy is fielded by O'Neill. And he is out to the 21-yard line. O'Neill with a 100-yard return for a touchdown. And if nothing else, Navy is fired up now. Well, they've got some momentum back. And if there was ever a time they needed a defensive stop, it's right now with 7.34 left in the game. Dean. 
defensively, but he can help emotionally. 41 years as a head trainer at Navy. This is his last ball game. Show us the helmet over there with a double R on it. This has to be an emotional game for you. Well, it is. It really is. What do these kids embody? Oh, they just, they're so close to everybody that they remind me of the Staubach years when they played together and, and just were tremendous together. And that's what made us so successful. Thank you, Reb. Appreciate it, buddy. Nice moment, Dean. And Dean from all of us here. Pass along our best to him. That was Douglas, the wide receiver, number 81 for the Cal Bears. And uh, 728 to go here, Todd. Navy looking for a little defense, and Cal hoping to move it on down the field. Yeah, they really need to come up with a big play. A turnover would be the best thing that Navy could hope for in a situation like this, but they've got to get some negative plays. And that time, good stop on Willis, and that was Bruce, number 51. If nothing else, number 51 has come to play here in his last football game for the Naval Academy. He'll play in an all-star game after this, but this is the last time that he'll suit up. And there's a young man out of Texas who really enjoys it. When you see the rosters of Army, Navy, the Air Force, you see a lot of youngsters out of the state of Texas. Second down. We'll keep it to the 44, and that is a first down. Big run by Pat Barnes, the senior from Mission Viejo, California. You know, we're seeing a little bit of everything from Pat Barnes today. We've seen him throw the tough throws. We've seen him make the good reads, the audibles at the line of scrimmage. This is an outstanding scramble by Pat Barnes, knowing who's coming in the pocket. You've got to be able to feel the rush and see downfield, and that's what he's able to do this time. He knows where the people are. He buys some time, and then he shows some speed and some ability to make plays as a scrambler. And I mean, he's, he really has the whole package, and that's why, as we talked earlier, I think that he has a very good future in the National Football League. Goes in maybe as a backup next year, but he'll have a chance to play. 6'10", Fullback is used, Mark Vera. He's the junior from Santa Rosa, California. And uh, Mariucci hoping to catch him a little bit off balance over there. You know, Mariucci is very active with the play calling as far as California is concerned. He is a hands-on offensive coach, and they don't make a play unless it goes through him. The same is not true of Coach Weatherby on the other side. But Mariucci is very hands-on with this offense. Six. Barnes, receiver's locked up, so he'll keep it again. And he steps out of bounds at the 47. He worked with Brett Favre, and uh, boy, this this can't hurt your recruiting, can it? <laughs> no, you should get this uh, printed on your business card or on the university letterhead, and every letter you send to a potential quarterback that you're recruiting should definitely read this uh, one of the first times you make contact with him. Has he not signed a top-flight junior college quarterback? Yeah, he has. He signed a guy, Justin Vetera, from uh, Saddleback Junior College that they are very high on. He's, he's not as big as Pat Barnes, but he's able to move around a little more in the pocket. They're very high on him. I think he'll be the quarterback next year. Well, here's third and one. But he appeared to pick up the first down for California with 5.22 left on that clock. Again, you look at the turnovers. The two turnovers that Navy has had in this ball game is just, you know, it just caused them to kind of not be able to keep stride scoring-wise with Cal in this football game and get a little bit behind. And the fact that they've not been able to force a turnover out of this Cal offense, and it's a real tribute to the Cal offensive football team because turnovers was really their demise, a big part of their demise in the second half of the season. They have protected the ball very well today. He'll hit for a loss that time by Brian Wilson. He's a freshman from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Well, we've got a little injury timeout down on the field. And uh, 
I want to ask our colleague Dean Blevins, who has been through the years, a question about, you can see that the Jaguars and the Bills, that'll open it up at noon Eastern. And then that second one, and Dean through the years has been close to the Dallas Cowboys. They'll play Minnesota. Dean, my question is, I see so many rumors from time to time. Does Barry Switzer have to take this team to the Super Bowl, this Cowboy team, to save his job? What's his status down there with the Cowboys, Dean? Well, I don't... I don't know the answer to that. I know two people that uh, will know the answer and will make the decision would be Stephen Jones and, of course, Jerry Jones. Jerry and Barry are very happy together. Of course, uh, they want to win football games, but uh, Barry wants to stay. I mean, he, he's a battler. He's enjoyed most of the time down there. My opinion is that he would like to stay a couple more years. But uh, things, i tell you one thing I do know, Brent, is that this team has had its back to the wall in big games this year, and they've not lost a must-win game so far. We'll see what they do from here on out, because if they don't lose any must-win games, that means they win a Super Bowl championship, and the odds are certainly against that. Yeah, Dean, thank you. You know, Todd, from afar, my impression is that Barry may have done his best coaching job of the year down there with the Cowboys. They've had all kinds of problems. Yeah, they have a lot of problems. And, you know, sometimes it seems like they try to associate some of those problems with the head coach and maybe his lack of discipline. I don't know, just like I don't know that a college coach has got to be responsible for all the problems that happen on campus or off the field, particularly at the professional level. Those guys get paid a lot of money to, uh, to carry themselves the right way on and off the field. Well, it was Big Tariq Glenn, the 350 <laughs> offensive tackle he was beset with some ankle problems throughout the season and you can see the heavy tape over there on the left then he came down with the flu here and those are Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl records Navy 563 yards of total offense they've combined for 971 about what we expected who has the football last you know, back to Tariq Glenn, when you are 350 plus pounds and you've got bad ankles, the, the only way to ever get them well is to just stay off of them for an extended period of time because that's that's a whole lot of pressure down on those joints. And, uh, you know, he tried to battle through ankle injuries throughout the season and really takes away from his effectiveness. California leads it by a field goal. Four and a half minutes to go. Second down and 11 for the Bears. Pat Barnes. From the middle, almost intercepted. This will be third down and 11 coming up for Cal. If Navy can hold here, Cal will be forced to punt. There's too much time on the clock, and it is third and 11, with the initial report being that Tariq Glenn went down with cramps. That at least is what we're hearing from the sideline. They still have not gotten much pressure here on this drive on Pat Barnes on this key third down situation. They need to get some pressure on him. They overload to the left. Three wide outs. Back to the middle. Benjamin's got it first down, California. That is a huge third down play for the Bears. Put Benjamin in motion and then bring him back across the formation. Again, Navy only rushing four. Four rushers, five blockers. There's nobody around. Pat Barnes, no white jerseys. Slipped it right inside the arm. And a good throw to Niall Benjamin. But again, four rushers. They've not had much success with only four getting any pressure on Barnes. Four minutes on the clock. Cal driving down at the 32. O'Neal, no gain. Maybe a yard with Tom Poulter wrapping him up. Tom is a senior out of Chelsea, Michigan. The good news for Navy, if they can stop them here and if they can keep them from, from getting a touchdown, the good news is Ben Fay has already been in the game. He's their two-minute specialist with the quarterback. He's already broken a sweat. He's already gotten his feet wet in the game. So coming in to try to win the game in the last couple minutes, he will have already had some game speed experience. He would have all three of his timeouts remaining. He'll slammed again after a short gain. Down around the 30 with Kevin Lewis, the safety from Forestville, Maryland. We've got a timeout being used by Navy. Their first timeout of the second half here at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl in Honolulu.
Excuse me, think your disposable razor shaves as comfortably as his Gillette Sensor Excel? Yeah, we'll try Sensor Excel. It'll change your mind. After one shave with Sensor Excel, we bet you don't go back. Because only Sensor Excel has protective microfins for extra comfort Whoa. and self adjusting blades for extra closeness. Mm. Disposables don't. And Sensor Excel gives more shapes per blade than any disposable. Excuse Take me. Take the Sensor Excel challenge. Bet you don't go back to disposables. Hey, I want my Sensor Excel back. Hey, hey! The warmest aloha from the Sheraton hotels that call Waikiki Beach home. The Sheraton Waikiki. The Royal Hawaiian. The Sheridan Moana Surfrider. The Sheridan Princess Kaiulani. Let Sheridan turn the world's most famous beach into your own tropical paradise. Come celebrate Aloha with Sheridan. For reservations, call 1-800-STAY-ITT. It's an aloha kind of day for the midshipmen. With Todd Blackledge and Dean Blevins, I'm Brent Musburger, welcoming you to the last 312 of regulation in the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. California leading by a field goal and driving. They now have another of those third down moments coming up here in the fourth quarter. They're at the Navy 31-yard line. They hit the last one, third and 11. I think they've got to come after him with at least five after the quarterback, maybe six. Trouble, Barnes will attempt to run and won't make it. Battles, reached for it, and down juggling the ball. Navy thinks they've got it. They do. As he reached out for the first down, the ball came free from the Cal quarterback. We said Navy had to come after Pat Barnes. They bring an all-out blitz. Here's Rashad Smith coming from the outside. Barnes again does a nice job eluding the rush, and he's made some plays scrambling. He's got the ball protected well right there, but as you said, as he tries to reach out for the first down, the ball comes out. You know, there's a difference between doing that when you're going for a touchdown. As soon as the ball crosses the plane, it's a touchdown. When you're going for a first down, if that ball comes out before your knee hits, it's a fumble. I mean, it's a, it's a gutsy play by Pat Barnes trying to get the first down that would have pretty much ended the hopes of Navy. It ends up a huge turnover, the one turnover that Navy's been able to force today. Three minutes to go. Bay and Navy with two timeouts. And on the pitch, the crew out of bounds, stopping the clock at the 18-yard line. They're staying with that formation too, Brent. The three wide receivers are trying to keep this Cal defense spread out. And don't forget, they, they do have the ability to do some trick things out of this formation. Howard Bryant, number 15, one of the slot backs that's been involved in this formation, can throw the football, so keep our eyes open for that. It was recovered by Jerome Dixon. He is a backup defensive tackle playing in his last game for Navy. He's a senior from Cape Coral, Florida. There they are with the formation. The mo motion man is McGrew right back toward the quarterback and made a throw out of it. Down the middle, Heaven overthrew it. So it is third and long coming up. One of the things that a young quarterback like Barnes will learn, Todd, that is in that situation when you're so close to the first down and time running down and you're that close to the goal line the coaches would have gone for it on fourth down they will tell the young man make sure you don't give the ball up in that yeah. situation he was just trying to make the big trying play at that play. moment you're right so it is third down 249 Scott first down maybe at the 33 and they're still firing Navy has plenty of time now. Two minutes and 44 seconds left. They've got two of their timeouts, and they don't need a touchdown. And really, they need a field goal to send this game into overtime. That great rule change in college football. Teams have more options right now. They can go for overtime. They don't have to go for the touchdown. Shem goes in motion, and they comes back to it. 50, 45, 33, a blocker on the right side, and Shem out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Oh. 
Here's Shem right here. He's coming in motion, and he's going to cross the field and just going to get kind of lost in the wash. You're going to see a couple defenders for Cal bump into each other, and nobody picks up Shem on the crossing route, and he has been the big play receiver for Navy all day. You think if they're going to forget about anybody, it shouldn't be Corey Shem. He was also the big play receiver in Dublin against Notre Dame, a game the Irish won. But it was Shim who went up and down the field for the Naval Academy. First down now for Navy, threatening from the 16-yard line. Time running down. Nelson breaks the tackle. Nelson bangs to the 10-yard line. And now it is that guts and determination that you've heard so much about from our service academies. Here is where it matters most of all. The time running down on them now at 2.14. And you think of all the heartbreaking moments that this team has experienced against Army over the last five years. They have lost five games to Army by a total of 10 points. But a chance now to erase the bad feelings from at least this season's loss. Although certainly nothing matters as much to a Navy man as beating Army. Now second down with Bay and the Navy offense. Beautiful fake to the fullback. Keeps it, and Navy leads. But don't celebrate too much down there. That Navy sideline, there's a lot of time left for Pat Barnes at 141 and this Cal passing attack. And this is a big extra point here. You want to make it a four point game so they can't tie you with the field goal. They do. play that Navy has used a lot. They're going to fake the option. This slot back is going to come like he's going to be the pitch man and then lead it on a quarterback draw. They show the option, but then they're going to come backside. Nice job by Ben Faye selling the option, selling the fake, and dipping in right on the backside for the touchdown. Look at Howard Bryant. He's not the pitch man. He comes and cuts off Andre Rhodes. And it's a nice lane again. Good block by Howard Bryant. Good block by Will Smith. And a touchdown for Ben Fay. And of all the, the guys on this team, uh, I mean, most fitting for Ben Fay, a senior. He transferred from Texas Tech. He was shared time as the quarterback last year with Chris McCoy. This year he spent most of the time on the bench, even though he was a, one of the co-captains on the football team. And, and for his last football game of his career at Navy, a chance to, to possibly bring his team back in the second half for a win. One turnover by his offense, and it resulted in perhaps the most important seven points of the game. Navy has turned it over twice here in the second half. The California able to convert only one of them into a field goal. 42 to 38, a four-point Navy lead, 141. Tim Schuster, another Texan to kick it off. Line drive, high bounce. Here's O'Neill from the six-yard line. Going to swing left. And nail at the 13-yard line. Matt Scanlon, the senior from Omaha, Nebraska, number four, coming down on the kickoff team. Fred, this is an interesting opportunity now for the Cal Bears because you know from doing a number of Army-Navy games, and I did it last year, there's no quit in this football team. They're going to play for the full 60 minutes. And that is the message that Steve Mariucci has been preaching to this Cal football team, the whole fourth quarter mentality and playing for 60 minutes. There he is again, showing the four fingers. This is an opportunity to really hammer that point home right now. First down, complete to Gonzalez. The tight end out of bounds at the 21-yard line. 
being able to play well in the fourth quarter of a football game when everything's on the line says an awful lot about the character and the fiber of your football team. You can have all the talent in the world, and if you don't have the right kind of character and the right kind of chemistry, you won't win games when you get deep into the fourth quarter. And that's what Cal has an opportunity to prove about themselves right now. There's a whistle, is it? There's a whistle on the play. Hold on. He might have been in control down there. Desmond Morgan blitzed in the sophomore from Portage, Michigan, and I believe the whistle sounded on it. They are going to move the ball back there to the 14-yard line. On a quick snap, Barnes complete and it's come down to one play for California. Navy in the last couple possessions has really made a change to get after the quarterback a little more. They brought a couple blitzes at Pat Barnes and they've really created some confusion. You see, see Steve Mariucci calling for the timeout. They've got to take some time and talk this play over. The play of the ball game right here on fourth down. It is fourth down and 11. California must find a way to reach the 26-yard line here with 105 left. Really a good call by Dick Pumpus on that third down play for the second down play. Going for the blitz call again. It really fooled Pat Barnes. He was not expecting the blitz to come on second down, and they got the sack. Looks to me like Georgia Southern's getting a heck of a football coach in Johnson. Yeah, they really they changed are. quarterbacks. They hit with a new formation. The big play was to Canada throwing out of that formation yeah. when they didn't expect it. And, of course, he'll go to Statesboro as the Navy's offensive coordinator has taken that job. And I want to remind everybody that speaking of comebacks, the comeback kids, Arizona State, resilient all year. Todd Blackledge has already told us that he voted for Jake Plummer as the Heisman Trophy winner. A moment I will never forget came when Arizona State was trailing UCLA and watched Jake Plummer get the ball back. Here comes Redmond, the halfback pass. Now watch the run after the catch into the end zone. That's the kind of effort you will see in the Rose Bowl by Arizona State against Ohio State on Wednesday. Now 105, and here it is, fourth and 11. Barnes. Bijer, along with Dennis Kane, Kane from Pennsylvania, and Bijer from California, wrap up the California quarterback. The final minute, and Navy with the ball inside Cal's 10-yard line in a tremendous Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Watch the coverage now. It's a zone defense, and Pat Barnes has nowhere to go with the football. They doubled both outside receivers. Great coverage downfield. Pat Barnes just couldn't go anywhere with the football. They got And Ben Fay, who was the hero of this game, coming off the bench. And it was a Santa Claus kind of day <laughs> here for the Naval Academy. Steve Mariucci, though, is off to a solid start, certainly offensively over at California in a very young defense, and I know it's a heartbreak for their youngsters, but... What a moment this is for the Naval Academy here in the shadow of Pearl Harbor to come over here and win this bowl game with a tremendous performance for that man. Charlie Weatherby once was the head coach at Utah State. What a great win for the senior class. Navy. As you mentioned, they never beat Army. They've got to live with that the rest of their life. But the last time they put on a football uniform, they won the game. away in an 80 point Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl we send you down now to Dean Charlie Weatherby 
The biggest one of your career on Dad. Oh, I'm telling you, as a head coach, it's got to be the biggest one I've ever been involved in. These guys have been playing like this all year long. They never gave up. They stayed in chance. They stayed focused the whole game. They found a way to win this football game. I just say praise God. Praise God for a great day. Your, your guys on the sideline, when they got behind by a couple of touchdowns, they continue to say, no way to quit. I'll tell you, we've got a bunch of guys that are fighters now. They are fighters. They found a way to win all year long. They have found a way to come back. And Go see your club. Go Thank see you. them. Thank you. All right. All I can say is, Auburn, get ready. Here comes West Point. Navy has done it at the Chief Eagle Aloha Bowl. So long, everybody. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, home of college football's national championship. A lot of kids get into crime because they don't have a stand-up adult to set them straight. If you care, become a mentor and teach a kid right from wrong. So do some good. Help a kid. Here's the number to find out how. Children first. Go on. Do it. Politically Incorrect is coming to ABC Late Night, but on New Year's Day... Show me toilet paper! Yes! Very good! Bob, play or pass? Uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, I think uh, we're gonna pass. Right, this is a tough one. All right, all right. 